Down but not out, the fight continues for Tri-City. Led by Alexander the Great, the Americans were able to conquer the hitmen and keep their chances of capturing the WHL Empire alive. Calgary, though, still holds a 3-1 series lead and will need to find a way to tear down the Iron Curtain if they want to capture the Edge Health Cup on home ice. Osh, gosh, will gosh. Game 5 of the WHL Final starts now. Western Hockey League Championship final returns to Calgary. The Hitmen arriving at about 4.39 Mountain Standard Time. Joel Broda there hasn't cut his hair since last year. Final Martin Jones. Looks like he's got a double-double there. He and his teammates trying to get this thing done on home mic. Zach Ewan and the Tri-State Americans while they're trying to send it back to Kennewick, Washington. Trying to stave off elimination one more time and go to a Game 6 on Sunday at the Toyota Center. Good evening and welcome inside the Penn Girls Sound Dome for Game 5 of the Western Hockey League Championship Final the quest for the Edge Chanel Cup here on the WHL on Shaw and High Definition. My name is Dan Elliott and we will begin with the Sobeys pregame show. Well, as expected, head coach of the Hitman, Mike Williamson, was disappointed his team could not finish off the series Wednesday night in Kennewick, but he was even more disappointed with the officiating. He thought there was a big discrepancy on how things were called between Games 3 and 4, citing the fact that in Game 4, his team had just one power play compared to the Americans who had four. And here's what he said in his post-game press conference about the lack of calls going against Tri-City. It was 8-2 to two last night. We had one power play tonight. Uh, it's got to be the cleanest team in the history of hockey. Well, a night to sleep on and a charter flight home to Calgary did not change his thinking. He told the Calgary Herald, and I quote, I thought there was lots out there that could have been called, but the ref decided not to. They tried to be non-factors, but became a factor because of it. Cam Moon had the opportunity to catch up with him before the game to see if he still felt the power plays would be a factor as this series continued. Mike, last game you get 42 shots on net with just one power play. Uh, how important is it to, to get power plays? It looks like you guys are doing pretty good already. Well, I, you know, I think when uh, when we create as much as we did the other night, most nights you're going to have more opportunities with the man advantage. Um, in saying that, I think our players can do a little bit better job getting to the net and getting position on guys in the offensive zone to, to maybe uh, uh, force that issue a, uh, a little bit more. How important is it to finish things off here on home ice? Well, it would sure be nice. You know, you don't want to, uh, anytime, anytime you have a chance to finish a team off, you don't want to give them extra life, and we've done that once. Uh, we played pretty well uh, last game, but, um, you know, we didn't get it done. So tonight in front of a big crowd, it certainly would be uh, nice to be able to, to treat everyone to a win. Mike, good luck, and thanks for this. Thanks. We'll send it back to Dan Elliott. Thank you very much, Cam. So far this series, 23 power play opportunities for Tri-City, just 11 for Calgary. But that's no, nothing new for the Tri-City Americans. During the regular season, they were the least penalized team in the entire league. In comparison, the Calgary Hitmen were the sixth most penalized team. With more now on Game 5, let's bring in Dan Russell and Bill Wilms. Thank you very much, Dan. Well, I want to go to the goaltending because everybody in hockey knows that a hot goalie can change things in a hurry. And if Alex Pachurski can duplicate what he did a couple of nights ago, Bill, this series, which had no drama for three games, will suddenly become rather interesting. The last five Tri-City playoff wins, the goaltender has been the number one star. On Wednesday, at the Toyota Center in Kennewick, this is what was Alex Pachurski's turn to shine. 2-1 in the second period. Tri-City leading. He faced 10 shots the first five minutes of period two. 22 shots all period. He made 22 saves. When he's playing well, it leads to this. 20 seconds into period number three, a power play goal. His team thrives off that. Justin Caesar, an insurance marker, 4-1 at the time. They went on to a 4-2 win. Alex Pachurski, Dan, 40 shots, 42 shots, made 40 saves. He was the number one star. Probably going to have to do it again tonight. Well, we just heard from Mike Williamson, the Calgary coach. Let's get a Tri-City perspective now. And their head coach, Jim Hiller, with Cam Moon. Jim, coming into this series, Drew Owsley carried the mail for you in the first three rounds. Alexander Petrusky has carried it for you here in this round. Uh, what does this speak of the depth of your hockey club? 
Well, that's the one thing we talked about all year, and uh, we thought if there was one area we were missing, it was maybe in goal. And Bob worked uh, for about four months, and getting Alex over here, that happened at Christmas, and he sat pretty patiently for a while in the first three rounds, as he mentioned, but he's sure important now. This isn't always the easiest building to play in. Uh, what did you learn from the first two games to help your team block out the crowd here tonight? Well, I think the first goal is so important. And, uh, you know, the first couple games I thought we started all right. The first five minutes were okay. And we gave up a couple chances uh, by way of turnover. Uh, we really have to limit that tonight. I think it's an important goal for us. We've got to push and get the first one. Jim, thanks for this. Good luck tonight. Okay, thanks. We'll send it back to Dan and Bill. Thank you, Cam. And Jim's been consistent through the whole way. He thinks that first goal is important and then has been important. Whoever scores has won all four games. Game five in the WHL Championship Series from Calgary, coming up next on Shaw. was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the I don't know if the Calgary Hitmen believe in omens. At the very least, it's quite a coincidence. But the Calgary Hitmen, their only WHL championship, came 11 years to the day. They won in also game five against the Kamloops Blazers in 1999. They'll try to add another banner here tonight. Well, we got a great crew ready for this game tonight. I'll send it upstairs to the one and only Dan Russell and Bill Wilms. Thank you very much, Cam, and another large crowd just like 11 years ago. There's your waste management starting goalie for the Tri-City Americans. You know Drew Owsley started every Tri-City playoff game until game three. And then this young man has come in and has allowed 10 goals against in 114 shots. And we go up the ice and Martin Jones, who only two days ago suffered this 40th loss in 188 decisions. 31 and 12 is all-time career playoff mark. Referees for tonight's game, veterans Andy Thiessen, he also worked game number one. He's back here in game five. Devin Klein worked game number three. And on the lines, Chris Carlson, who was here in game one, and Jeff Jobson in game number two. They're back as a duo here for game five of the championship series. And away we go with the Americans in the dark uniforms. And a battle off the opening faceoff to see who gets to shoot it in what team zone. Michael Stone goes back to collect the puck. High off the glass, it comes out to center. Broder trying to chase it down. Quick two on one for Calgary. Broder misses the net. Sylvester was with them. Scoring chances, 20 seconds in. Here's Nyren throwing it in front. Shot by Broder's blocked. 
Schultz, penalty coming up. Well, that didn't take long. Tri-City is going to get a power play. Or uh, Calgary is going to get a power play. As there's a centering pass. The Americans touch it. So Mike Williamson, who's been talking for two days about not getting enough chances with the man advantage, gets one in the first minute of game five. It looks like Holland gets his stick up, first of all in the feet, and then in the waist area of Giffen Nyron. Not sure that's the call, but that's certainly what it looks like, and it's certainly an indication early. This is, I think, the penalty there, the stick right in the feet area. I don't think necessarily a player has to fall to have the trip be called. I think the intent is what was mattered there. Americans get the puck down the ice, so the Americans take the first penalty. Calgary three for 10 with the man advantage in this series. And in the playoffs, they have 29 power play goals on 96 chances. Broda goes through with the front of the neck with that pass, and Kozin got a stick on it, and Pachurski made a good save. A nice save for Alex to start his game here in Calgary as Nyron brings the puck through the center ice area. Nyron hitting the line, throws one on Petrushka, has trouble with it, and he got, got scrambled back in time to make the save, and then the centering pass was intercepted. McKenzie now to Kozin, back to McKenzie. McKenzie has his shot tipped to the corner. Shattuck picks it up, here's Kozin. Kozin, nice pass. McKenzie shot up high, and the puck is shot down the ice by Jared Toll. And again, you watch the Calgary Hitmen, what they do well on the power play. They have two or three, sometimes four passes inside the offensive zone. And that always is trouble for the defense as killed in the penalty to factor that. You gotta be really alert. A minute gone in the penalty. Foucault plays it around the, to the point. Long shot, deflects off the target. Foucault again from back of the net. That's the Senko with them. Comes back to Stebner, shot was wide. Over on the far side, Stone dishes it to Bubnik. Bubnik down to Fasenko. Intercepted by Zachary Ewan as he clears it around this near side. Nyron pinching to hold it in. Shinneman forcing it out along with Ewan to get it out to the center ice area. Now there's a half minute remaining in the first power play. Bubnik trying to go past Ewan, could not, but he gets it back and throws it in front. Throw is stopped by Paterski. They scored on the rebound, but there'll be no goal. That whistle clearly blew. The large crowd here might not have heard it, but we heard it upstairs. And what a save by Alexander Paczerski. In fact, he's made two or three early ones. Misha Faseko, what presence of mind to have this puck. He's facing his own zone, and what he does is he just taps it back inside to that spot. Bubnik, how quickly he recognizes that Broda's alone in front of the net, and a nice save by Paczerski. The shot into the net after the whistle, but that's exactly what I'm talking about, those puck touches inside the offensive zone on the power play. McKenzie from the blue line, dishes it to Kozin in front, Nyran shot is blocked by Paczerski, who comes over, makes a nice arm save. Well, that's five shots on goal for Calgary, and five more saves for Alexander Paczerski, who so far has picked up where he's left off. He hasn't had a chance to be nervous, hasn't had a chance to get his feet underneath him, hasn't had a chance to feel the puck. He's had to make big saves. Here's Broda again, and Paczerski cuts down that angle, and I believe Broda's already got three of those six shots. This is what Giffen Nyron gives you, another look. He's the guy that's gonna move in close on the power play. There's the one puck, the two puck touches, and then they get Nyron going to the net. Paczerski really, Nice making that save, but you know, you notice where that power play started? It started on the half wall. This is what I think the Calgary Hitman power play is so effective because they either quarterback it from the blue line and they are just as dangerous when they quarterback it from the half wall along the boards. Americans are back at full strength. Huseman tips it out. They did have to make a lineup change as Brooks Masick was scratched with an upper body injury. Dryden Dow, a defenseman, has drawn in. I think three big requirements for Jim Hiller's team to force a game six. I think they've got to score first. I think they've got to score on the power play. And they need number one star performance from Pachurski. Now, either scoring first or scoring on the power play, one of those two, you might get away with not doing that. But it's got to be one of the others for sure, plus Pachurski. No doubt in my mind. Here's Kozin, shot through traffic, and that's knocked down. And here come the Americans out of their own zone, led by Kennedy. He got the center, and then the puck bounced out of play over at the bench. We'll get a face-off in the neutral zone. This is a very confident group that uh, Mike Williamson has. And you know, 
you take a look at the play of the defense in this series, and this might be a difference in a game like tonight. The Calgary defense are a combined plus 18. The Tri-City defense combined minus 20. And I tell you, that tells you the difference in the contribution of what happens, if you will, offensively on the ice for both teams. Lineup change for Calgary on defense. Kosterman back in, Rizling out. They've been interchangeable. Not quite alternating, but there's been a lot of that. Here's Shinneman off the board. Shinneman trying to throw it in front. Couldn't find his man, Messier. McKenzie ties up Shinneman for a moment, but now he gets it back to Plouffe. Brett Plouffe from the line, shot the flex on to Jones, and he makes the save. And Jones loses his stick. He's going to try to get it back again, and he's able to do so as McKenzie gets the puck out to Cowan. Cowan playing his 40th career WHL playoff game as Wilson goes back to collect it. Ben Wilson, who's playing for his hometown team, would love, obviously, like every other hitman to win a championship, but what about the boys who are born here? Wilson is one of those. That's him with the puck right now. Bubnik couldn't get it past. Tri-City player back at the net. There's the center pass to Toll, and his shot goes wide of the net. Holland trying to chase it down. Goes back to the line. Long shot on to Jones, and he makes the save as Brock Sutherland shot it from the blue line. You know, the Tri-City Americans, it's important, I think, for them to get players in behind the defense. Really, if you're in behind the Calgary defense, chances are you're pretty sure you're going to be in the face of Jones. Take a look and see where the blue-shirted Tri-City American player is. He gets in behind McKenzie. That's a good job. That's Messier in there creating some kind of problem for Jones. Got to do that. Jones' playoff stats in his career have been absolutely outstanding. I don't know what more Martin Jones has to do uh, to convince people that he's almost, he's certainly w or, uh, American Hockey League ready. 21 goals against in his last 10 games, so that's pretty good. So many great stats about Jones as the Hitmen come out of their own zone. They're able to roll it in. The early shots are 6-3. to three. Calgary on their own side of center, so that puck, or the faceoff rather, will come back. That's what we're talking about, his all-time playoff stats. An awful lot of saves there. Needs uh, 22 I, more saves to uh, tie Alexander Fomachev. And how about 9-1-2 save percentage? Boy, that's pretty impressive come playoff time. You know what? You take a look at Pachersky and what he's done coming into tonight's game. You do the math on it real quick and you look at the stats. Alexander Pachersky, a 9-2-0 save percentage right now. And he's only played basically the, you know, the, the game series against his Calgary Hitman team. That's number one save percentage in the Western Hockey League in the playoffs. That's how good that kid Pachersky's been. They were just saving him. Yeah, I, well, this is the time. No! Pull out all stoppers now. Brock Sutherland back to collect the puck. Got it up to Toll. Nice pass by Toll. Here's Cruz Reddick. Shot up high. Rebound. Poked wide of the net. Another chance for Hughesman. He bangs at it. Is it in? It scores. Tri-City Americans get the first goal as Jones could not hold the post there. There's some discussion as to whether the net came off, but I think that puck was in before it came off, and the Americans, for the second straight game, looked like they had the first goal. The key here is, again, the shot. The puck comes in from outside the zone, but Hughesman, a great job. He wouldn't be denied. You watch him. Jones with that big leg. This is important to get this puck in deep. That's number one. You get the goaltender to juggle it. Watch 17. One whack at it there. He's not done yet. Even though he's got three guys taking him down on the ice, Huseman doesn't take no for an answer there. One bang, another bang. And it's while he's on his knees that he actually jams it in. Get a look here. He just absolutely wouldn't quit. That's I mean, so important, a terrific job. Maybe it was a defenseman for the Cal Calgary Hitmen that ended up putting it in. Let's pick up the announcement. For 13, Sergei Draws, and to number 12, 11. Here comes Reddick. Foucault, and Coming his shot is stopped by seconds. Pachersky. So we'll get that announcement later. Meantime, there's a penalty for hooking, as Tri-City is going to go to the penalty box, but that goal coming at 5.02, and then the penalty at 5.17. 7-4 now, shots on goal. A little bit of a shocker if you're the Calgary Hitman supporters. Here's the penalty called on the back check. Just a lazy penalty. Brett Plouffe, a defenseman, gets caught in a chase mode, takes that penalty, puts his team shorthanded. Boy, it's a dodge and a bullet now. Nyron, now to Shattuck. 
or Stone rather, back to Nyren in front of the net. That pass intercepted. And the Americans able to get the puck down the ice. Ewan and, well, it looks like Reddick will go to the bench and Wilgosh as they change a couple of the penalty killers, the Americans do. As Kozin makes a move through the neutral zone. Pass to Broda. Broda can't get it past the man. And here come the Americans. Shorthanded chance for Lazo. Winding up, shooting up high. And goaltender Jones took it, absorbed it, but I'm sure felt it at the same time. A hard shot by Lazo. Here comes Fisenko. Fisenko with room now. Shoot, scores! The Russian shooter beats the Russian goalie on a nice rush up the ice to tie the game 1-1. Both players from the same hometown, Magnitogorsk, Russia. Fisenko coming down that right side, left hand shot, terrific release. Nothing fancy about it. Little hard skate to the outside, the forward kill in the penalty. And it probably catches Pachersky a little deep and a little surprised. You know, Misha Faseko leads all goal scorers in this series. Came into tonight's game with three, make that four, and he's got his team back in a tie game. His eighth overall in these playoffs. Here's the announcement. His eighth of the playoffs, scored by number 10, Misha Faseko. Assist number 31, Martin Jones. Time to go in six minutes, three seconds. Well, you might as well get somebody else on the score sheet. How many is that give Calgary as Jones gets an assist? I think 18 different players, 19 different players have had points. Everyone but Jane and Wrestling by my count. Here comes Shineman in over the line. Now to Huseman. Huseman stops, waits, holds, throws it in front. Here's Shineman. Can't get the shot away. Waited just a little too long. Thought he had more time. Icing called now on Calgary. Shinneman just mishandled that puck. I think Shinneman's been a bit snake bit for the Tri-City Americans. If he ever gets unwound, really gets flying, he could be super dangerous. Watch him. He, he wants so hard to bring that puck from one side. You know, he knows he's on a terrible angle. Wants to get it back on his backhand. And you can see by his expression, he says he can't believe. I just can't handle that puck. And then all his mishandles seem to be right around the crease area. How many times have we seen that look on his face after one of those in this series? Yeah, I mentioned uh, one of the broadcasts. He was in on nine of the first 12 Tri-City goals of the season. He's never looked back. Finished with 82 points. Puck goes out of play in the neutral zone, so each team has a goal in the first seven-plus minutes, and each team has seven shots. By the way, going back to what Cam Moon talked about uh, back 11 years ago to the date, Maybe one of the differences is not a big one, although this place is very, very full. That night, 17,169 people in the building to watch the Hitmen win their first ever Western Hockey League championship. Upwards of plus 15, we're told, here tonight. So it's, uh, wow, and maybe a larger walk-up than, than we think. And as for goals in the first period, there's now been 13 first period goals in this final. Five in the second, seven in the third period. So first periods have been filled with goals. Reddick on this near side, tried to put it in front, but didn't get good wood on his pass. Fuko put it out, but it shot right back in again, and Jones will leave it for Nyron. Give it Nyron. Lead pass, went off an American player. Ewan over skates it, Toll's got it. Jarrett Toll. Here he goes, can he go all the way? And it's tipped off the target. He tries to throw it in front. Kozin in the corner along with Mike Brown. Nyron will try this side. Fuko hit by Toll as he played the puck up. Abubnik couldn't hit Kozin with the pass. And here's Holland, Holland. His pass almost picked off by Fuko, but Brown follows it up. He'll shoot it in, Kozin on the back check. First to it, gets it to Cowan. Cowan out here to Fisenko, Fisenko's pass. Here's Kozin now. Three Americans are back. Two of them squeeze into Kozin, eliminating him from the puck. And it comes out to the neutral zone. And here's Kosterman's first shift of the hockey game. He had the game-winning goal in game number two. His first ever WHL goal. Meantime, here's Shineman trying to get loose. Shineman going wide, going hard. Can't get a shot away. And oh boy, was he hit. As both Stone, well, here he is on the wraparound. In front of the net, Messier couldn't get a stick on it. Shineman was hit by two Calgary hitmen. 
Stone and Kosterman bounces up and has a glorious chance on the wraparound. And they're still buzzing around that Calgary goal as now Kozin sends Pasenko away. Pasenko here to Cowan. Cowan, Pasenko following it up, bumped off the puck, stays with it, puts it back at the net. Americans clear it. Now Shinneman's got a little bit of room to do a bit more of that. But the pass to the Calgary player and McKenzie handles it. McKenzie has hit the score sheet so often in the playoffs but has gone three games now without a point. Long shot, that's knocked down. Here's Broda down low, Broda shot! And that's turned aside by Paczerski. Broda trying to collect his own rebound, couldn't get it. Calgary putting the Americans under some pressure here. Shinneman sensing that, switches it to the far side. That's a good play by Shinneman. As he got it to Messier who got it down the ice and there is no icing. Boy, Shinneman's come in here really determined that this is not gonna be the Americans' last game. He has been terrific the first 10 minutes of this period. Nestory gets the puck. Give it away, there's a chance in front for Schultz. Puck still sitting there and it goes wide. Bubnik from back of the net, trying to throw it in front. Broder trying to throw it in front. Nothing but Americans there, and here they come out of their own zone. Holland leading the way. Poked off his stick as he hit the Calgary line. Draws trying to follow it up, could not. And it's offside with 9.56 to go. First period, each team with one goal, each team with eight shots, and we're coming back on Shaw right after this. Terry Virtue, associate coach here with the Tri-City Americans. So you've given up some chances. You've had some good chances. Your thoughts on your team's start? Oh, it was a good start. We took a couple penalties so far. We got to stay out of the box, but uh, you know, us getting the first goal is key in this series. Uh, you know, hopefully we can continue to stay on the body and get after on the forecheck and uh, stay out of the box. If we uh, keep skating, there eventually ain't going to get one. And hopefully we can uh, capitalize on the power play. Terry, thanks very much. Thanks, Cam. I talk about Brendan Shinneman coming out playing his heart out in that first 10 minutes. Scouts look for a player's chin. Where is it when he takes pucks to the net? Is it down where he's determined or is his chin up where he's a little bit tentative? Every time you watch Brendan Shinneman, he's got his chin down. He's around that net. He doesn't care about traffic. He's there for a purpose and he's done a terrific job here tonight. Two assists in game number four helping his team stay alive with that 4-2 victory at Kennewick on Wednesday night. Americans get the puck, clear to the line. Holland is hit by Royer, and that allows Burgart to shoot the puck in as Calgary Fiddler goes in, a fourth line, if you will, out there for the Hitman. And you know what their role is gonna try to be. It's keep it down here, grind, get some hits in, maybe even a scoring chance. Burgard throws it in front, that's intercepted as Royer can't reach it. Brown with a good job to get it out for Tri-City. He's a race for the puck, trying to get there as Paul and Nyron cutting him off for the moment anyway. And then he got the puck back again as he switches it to this side. Held in by Plouffe only for a moment. And it comes out here to Zach for Ewan. Lead pass, there's gonna be a penalty here. And over the line, chance for a shot by Lazo. Boy, uh, just look at a Shinneman, he's hurt in the center ice area. The arm was in the air. It's gonna be an interference penalty as you can see Andy Thiessen, the veteran referee, sending Michael Stone to the penalty box. Don't just think of Michael Stone as a shot blocker. Don't just think of him as a shooter. Not just a point getter. He's got five assists in this series. He's a very physical player. And when you are physical, you will cross the line every once in a while. You want to play close to the line, but you know, you'd rather have a guy take some penalties like that than never get involved physically. Michael Backlund, Michael Stone, that collision last year in the Western Hockey League Finals won. If you saw it, you'll never forget. So the Americans on their first power play, they're two for 23 with the man advantage in the series, including a power play goal in their last game. And in these playoffs, Calgary has allowed 17 goals when shorthanded on 93 shorthanded situations. 1-1 one, one tie, nine minutes to go in the period. Shinneman right back out there after getting hit by Stone, has the puck. Shinneman moves in, holds, back to Cruz Reddick, over to Jared Toll. Check that, that's Schmidt, back to Reddick. Reddick over here to Shinneman, a shot, and a rebound, and Huseman couldn't get his stick on it. Sylvester starts back the other way. 
And he'll roll the puck in. Head to the bench on a line change. Here comes Shinneman again. Now Lazo. Lazo goes wide. Lazo from back of the net. His pass to the point. Deflected. And Cowan, who deflected it, is trying to chase it down as well. He does, but there's nothing but Americans around him. Cowan took a hit, as he was expecting he would. Huseman rolls it in. Chinnaman tries to give chase. Couldn't. Nyron tips it back out to the neutral zone with just over a minute remaining in the Americans' penalty. The element of surprise has not been there so far in this series on the Tri-City power play. I think that's the reason they're two for 23. Now, the goalie scored the other night on the power play. I thought in period two was a bit of a surprise factor. They're good when they shock you with where they go with the puck. Can they heat the puck in? Yes, they do. Nice job there by Plouffe as he got it over to Holland. Back to Plouffe. Wrist shot through traffic. Kick to the corner nicely by Jones. As the puck comes off the boards, here comes Broda. As he knocks it to the neutral zone, there's a half minute now remaining in the man advantage. Seven and a half to go in the first. Messier in over the line. Drop pass. Here's Holland. Shot. Good save by Jones as he stretches out with that right pad. And Jones has faced 10 shots already. In fact, the shots are 10-9 in favor of the Americans. Stone's penalty about to come to an end. Fiddler back to get the puck. Knocked off it by Brown. Brown trying to find Will Gosh. Good job in the corner by Brown. He maintained possession. Now it's Will Gosh's turn. He shoots it towards the net. Didn't miss that far corner by much. Ewan dumps it in. This is a much more confident Tri-City American team than we saw in either of the games here by a country mile, in fact. Oh, they're doing things that they can do now. I don't think they're intimidated by coming into this building, the big crowd. They've got a young team. You've got to remember... They were certainly in shock and awe game one in this building. Game two as well. Uh, carried over. Here comes Lazo. Lazo to Shineman. Shineman shot up high and Jones has got it for his 11th save of the, well, 10 out of 11 in the period. I think this might have been Patrick Holland's best chance of the playoffs and it might have been Martin Jones certainly best save of this first period. This is a drop pass and all of a sudden a quick snap, the quick release and you see two things there. Number one, the pad gets out. Watch the right pad, but the blocker on top of it. You don't think that's good goaltending technique? Technique, It's absolutely perfect. Pad out in case it's a low shot. Blocker covers on top of the pad in case it goes pad over the pad height. Tri-City Americans six and four in these playoffs away from home. Calgary eight and four on home ice. Calgary has scored 92 goals, make it 93. And the Americans have 69 in these playoffs. Here's the centering pass. Stone oh, couldn't pull the trigger as he came roaring in from the defensive position, but he couldn't get the shot away. In the meantime, Huseman comes back. Huseman shot, turned aside by Jones. I don't think Jones felt he was probably going to have to be as busy as he has been, but 13 shots in this period. The Americans had 14 in the first period of the last game. Lead pass up for Sylvester behind him. And again, the Hitman play without Cody Beach, who's part of Sylvester's line for the third straight game. Stebner plays it around the far side. Schultz tips it out to center. Sutherland puts it back in again. Stebner with the score on his back. 1-1. Lead pass up for Sylvester. Now Schultz couldn't maintain possession. Stebner follows up, couldn't get it in the first time. So Calgary tries this side. Kosterman up to Schultz, who deflects it inside the American zone, and Sutherland goes back to get it. Down the ice it goes. Ben Wilson gave it away for a moment. Holland couldn't maintain possession. Kloof has got it. He puts it back at the net for Holland. Holland. With room, throws it in front of the net, but it's intercepted by Calgary, and back they start. Here's Royer with Fiddler. Royer, now Burgart, the trailer, can't get the pass cleanly. Good back checking by Brown. Burgart, now Fiddler, now to the point, but Stone couldn't get it because it was too high. And that might have been dangerous. Five fresh skaters for the Americans as they make a change. 
4.14 to go, first period, game five. Both teams chartered in early Thursday morning. I mean early, they got up, were at the airport and flying out of the Kennewick on the same flight at eight in the morning yesterday. Puck goes wide of the net. They'll go back tomorrow morning if there's a game six in Tri-City. Senko trying to move it off the wall, couldn't Shinneman now. Settling it down, dishes it off. Schmidt's pass misses everybody, but there is no icing. Back to get it, Stebner. Switches it over to the far side. McKenzie trying to reach it. It is tipped out by Calgary. Shot right back in again. Calgary had a really fast five, first five minutes, but since then, the Americans who did score first, they've settled down the period, even though Calgary tied it. But I'd say since the Fisenko goal, the Americans have been the better team in this period. What they've done so much better than Tri-City is what you call your F2. The first man in, that's F1. F2 is a guy that just got the puck. They're supporting it. Your second man on the forecheck is completely different for this Tri-City team. Meantime, Kloof, great move, shoots, just missed the net. That hit something on the way. Brett Kloof had a fantastic move to get by whatever F that was. <laughs> I guess Fuko. And uh, he almost got Tri-City their second goal. Now that puck was out of play. Is there going to be a penalty there? Everybody's going to discuss it. Everybody in stripes, that is. And usually when you get that kind of discussion, you say to yourself, okay, well, what's going to happen here? Then this all came because, as I was talking about, that good puck support on the forecheck. Neat little move. Waits out Fuko, and he has a presence of mind to shoot it along the ice. And, you know, watch the players in front of the net. Count them. There's five or six there. I think two or three of those were Tri-City Americas. They've got to get there. The AMS to be successful cannot be perimeter players. They've got to play where they've been playing so far this period. They have to win races to pucks. They have to be first on it. And I'm telling you, in my opinion, this is 17 minutes and best playoff hockey for the Americans this series. And there was Mestre shooting it from the line. And by the way, Mestre and Sutherland, they're improving. They were minus three the first game, those two. Minus two the second. Minus one the third. And they were both even players, Sutherland and Mestre, in game number four. They could be plus players tonight. They're trending that way. Head in the right direction. There's no doubt about that. Broda has it lost in his skate. Sutherland now. Holland in on the four check and Broda gets it out. Toll trying to get it. Will Gosh two. Schultz fell and that went off his pad so it goes behind the Tri-City Americans goal. I remember at Calgary having six shots in the early going and they've had three since then. 13-9 again. Uh, puck spin where you see it right now an awful lot of this. Well, maybe not an awful lot, but it's been, there, been down in the Calgary zone significantly enough that this American team's got confidence. You saw they scored the first goal. That means a lot to them. They certainly thrive off the play of their goalie. Wow, there's a chance at another one, and a third one that Pachersky makes a save on. And it was Cowan initially getting a shot. Pachersky holding his ground. Yeah, turnovers, it can happen all over the place. You don't want to give the puck up you know, when you've got possession of it like that, you don't want to give it up. Where does it go? Off a skate. Again, Fasenko on the forecheck. Sometimes you got to be lucky. You're on the forecheck. You want to deny the puck. Sometimes you can do it with your stick. Other times it bounces off your skate. The important thing for the hitman in that sequence is that it ends up in front of the net. Important thing for the Americans is their goaltender makes a save. Stebner puts the puck back in. Minute 43 to go here in period number one. Tipped in by Messier, Cozen giving chase. And Wilson goes to get the puck. Wilson couldn't move it though, here's Draws. Draws got an assist on the goal for the Americans. Comes out here to center. Shot back in. Over on the far side, Stebner will have lots of room because the Americans are making a change. Stebner from Saskatoon. One of six Saskatchewan players in this series. We have 20 Alberta boys. We have 12 from British Columbia, 12 from Manitoba. Ironically, there are no Americans in this series, except for the team. Foucault, hard pass in front and a high pass. Too high for McKenzie to handle. 
Nice check on the backboards there by Schmidt. On Shattuck, puck scores free. Shattuck trying to get a stick on it. And just could not. Here come the Americans. Lazo with his speed brings it in over the blue line. Lazo. At the pass, go in front of the net, or the shot at least tip in front of the net. McKenzie gets the puck to the line, but not out. Ewan, nice move. Ewan plays it towards Lazo. Foucault back there. And it goes off the glass and out of play. The Tri-City Americans in the offensive zone have been quicker. They've been diligent. They've created turnovers. This is the way they've got to play in their own zone. This is Schmidt going in and delivering that kind of a hit. That's the size difference that they have. Their big guys for the Americans are back in their own blue line. They are, they're virtually useless unless they play that kind of physical play in their own zone. Justin Fazer in there to take the face off. Scored an exciting goal in Kennewick the other night. There's a shot turned aside by Jones. Fazer goes back into it. Fazer has 36 goals in the regular season. Here's a chance for another one in front of the net and it rolls off his stick. Brown, Holland, Fazer, they're buzzing beside that Calgary goal, and the hitman, Stebner, trying to settle it down with five seconds to go in the period. Long lead pass down the ice. This will be icing before the whistle or the horn will sound. There's under a second remaining. You see a lot of very good uh, forechecking with guys all together. That's what you're talking about. You know, Brandon Cozen's got four points, number 15, in this series, but it's been rough. He's been hit. He's been eliminated, but he keeps coming back. He knows that he's got to get a little time and a little bit of space. That's as big a pounding as I've seen Brandon Cozen take in all the games that we've done, but you know what? He's never deterred. He doesn't discourage easily. And again, he's leading this team. He's leading the playoffs in scoring. And you take a look at what, as I say, what he's done, four points in four games in this series. And that was his teammate Schultz hitting him on one of those hits that we just showed you. They put a little bit more time on the clock, but not enough time for a shot. Mind you, we had plenty of those in this period. 14 for the Tri-City Americans, 11 for Calgary. So two goals combined on 25 shots. Good goaltending by Jones and that young man, Paczerski as we go to our young man, Dan Elliott. Far too kind, Dan. Thank you very much. Coming up in the first intermission, we'll check in with Cruz Reddick. He picked up an assist tonight. He's now third time for third in playoff scoring rates. Kyle Raymond, former WHL official of the year, now in the NHL, he will stop by and talk about how his career is going. But inside the WHL with Cam Moon, of course, we'll have highlights and analysis through 20 minutes of play. All that coming up next. We've got a good one going for you here in game five. One won the score after 20 minutes of play. Game five of this WHL final tied at one after the first period. Cruz Reddick from the Tri-City Americans, our guest. Cruz, looked like you guys had a pretty good jump. What do you think of the first period? I thought we came out strong. It was good. We wanted to we wanted to get that first one, which you did. We gave up one on the penalty kill, but you know it was a good period for us. We got a lot of positives to build off, so we'll come into the second and third strong. Getting that win on Wednesday night, keeping this series going. Looks like that's put a little confidence with this into this team. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we know we can beat them right now. We knew we could play with them all along. We just needed that first win and those first couple goals to go in. So we're right there with them. Uh, nobody's thrown in the towel yet. We're, uh, we're a proud bunch in there and nobody's going to give up. Talk about your goalie, Alex Paczerski. Looked so good on Wednesday night. Looked really good in the first period. Yeah, I mean, he kind of got thrown in the fire there in the start of the series, and he stepped up huge. He's been a huge part of our win last night, and, I mean, we couldn't have done it without him, so we rely on him big time, and he's done a great job. What do you expect down the down the last 40 of this one here? I expect them to come hard. I mean, they probably want to end it tonight. Uh, win on home ice, it should be good for them, but, you know, we don't want to let that happen. We're not, we're not ready for our season to be over yet, so... It's going to be a tough series for us and them, but we're going to come out strong. Cruz, thanks for that. All right, thanks a lot. Cruz Raddick of the Tri-City Americans. Four years with the Americans as we send it to Dan Elliott. All right, I appreciate it, Cam. Please be joined now by former WHL Official of the Year, Kyle Raymond, now working in the AHL and the NHL. It was uh, three years ago you were doing the Medicine Hat uh, uh, Vancouver Series. That's yeah, right, that's, yeah, that's in correct. the final, yeah. yeah. It was, uh, probably still one of my favorite memories of officiating hockey. Uh, I got to work uh, three games in the series, and uh, something I'll never forget. It was uh, a lot of fun, and 
you know, it's it's an honor for us to be out there too, as you know, as the officials. They work hard all year, and that's the goal they aspire to get to is work the finals. So, uh, you know, a testament to these guys out here. They've worked hard all year to get here, and uh, they're doing a great job tonight. Well, talk about uh, your development. Uh, uh, you spent five years in the WHL, and then have moved on to pro professional in the AHL and NHL. How was that time in the WHL, and in terms of preparing you to get to that next level? Oh, it was key. Uh, I mean, I think the Western Hockey League does a great job. Kevin Minch with the director of officiating, uh, and Kevin Atchison, and he's got Jeff Edgley on board, a former linesman who I used to work a lot of games with. Uh, they, and them and their, their officiating managers do a phenomenal job with the coaching. Uh, it's first class, and also, you know what, the guys here at this level, you get tested from coaches. I mean, there's some great coaches that have either been in the pros or, or are going to the pros, uh, and you know, the players too. I mean. <laughs> it's 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 a great league to work, and it, honestly, it's really helped my development. And I think uh, you know, it's it's I owe a lot to the Western Hockey League. That's for sure. So tell us where you're at right now. I know you've, you've been doing both, but how many NHL games did you do this year? Uh, this year I was very fortunate. I mean, we had some injuries up top, which opened up some more games for the younger guys. I worked uh, 32 regular season games, so I was uh, extremely happy and fortunate about that. And it was a it was a great year. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I got to work in a lot of barns that I'd never been to. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. Now we're just in the American League playoffs, and uh, leave again on uh, fly out on Sunday to Toronto. Work there in Hamilton on Monday. Now you do uh, 32 games in the NHL, how many through the AHL regular uh, season? This year I did 50 games, we're okay. contracted to do uh, 80 games on a minor league contract, so I was two over, so I got a little bit of extra pay, but that again came because of some of the uh, guys going down, so it was nice for me at the end of the year, and uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun, a great, great experience. How's that transition for you to go from, I know in the NH AHL rather, a lot of times you're refereed by yourself, to go into the NHL where it's a two-man system? Oh, it's definitely a change. I mean. Everything is, your sight lines are totally opposite. In the American League, you know, a lot of the times, because the play happens so fast, you're trailing the play, so you're having to watch, you know, possible infractions, the hooks, the holds, the free arms from the backside. And then when you work, you know, you go up to the National League level, now you're back to the four-man, and everything it comes at you. So it's yeah. totally different perspective. Sight lines are much better. I mean, the game is too fast for one referee. As much as people say they'd like to see one referee system, it's honestly just too fast. Yeah. You're never going to get everything. Absolutely <laughs> not. I mean, I've told players in the American League level, you know, if, if I don't see it, I'm never going to guess. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you're going to miss penalties, and you just try not to miss too many. I guess the big thing there is just consistency. I know that uh, in this series here, the head coach of the Hitman, Mike Williamson, was kind of questioning the consistency uh, because there's always so many different guys throughout the final, but that's the toughest thing to get, I guess. Absolutely. That's that's a key. If you want to make it in the business of officiating, you've got to be consistent. And if you're, I mean, you've got from the, from the start of the season all the way into the last game of the, you know, of the Ed Chanel Cup, you've got to be consistent night in, night out. And uh, you know what? I think the guys here do a real good job. Kevin Minch, I know, does a lot, of, a lot of video with the guys to make sure, you know, if they haven't worked, you know, game one, two, and they're coming in for game three, they've seen video clips from the previous games. So Kevin does a very good job preparing the guys. And uh, you know what? Uh, like I said, they want to be consistent every night, and that's one thing we strive as officials to do. And I guess there's a lot of guys here in the WHL who obviously want to follow in your footsteps, get to the next level. Do you get guys trying to pick your brain, trying to find out how to make that step? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I talk to a lot of a lot of my good buddies are still, you know, working in the fish in the Western League here, and you know, I come to support them when I can and talk to them on the phone. And you know what? I I hope a lot of our guys get a chance because it's it's an it's an awesome experience. It's it's a great job if you want to call it a job. I mean, yeah, some nights are tougher than others yeah. but to be on the ice with the best players in the world a part of the best game in the world it's, it's an honor and it's a privilege well it's an honor and privilege to have you stop by Kyle thank you very much for taking the time and best of luck as you continue on to the AHL playoffs thanks a lot appreciate it all right we got to take a quick break more to come from here at the Saddle Dome where we have got a 1-1 score in game five of the WHL final between the Hitmen and Americans Welcome back to the Pengirl Saddle Dome. Here we are, ice level. Dan Elliott alongside Cam Moon as we go inside the WHL. 1-1 the score in our game. 14-11 the shots in the favor of the Tri-City Americans. But it was 6-1 Calgary shots after three minutes of play, Cam. Yeah, a real good start for the Hitmen. They were just firing. They're getting the puck to the net. And Alexander Paczerski <laughs> again. I mean, holds them out. He, may, he had to make some really big stops early. And that seemed to give the Americans a bit of time to get their feet underneath them and then once they scored that goal they really started to you know swing things that way and then you give up a bit of a little bit of a rush it wasn't wasn't like it was a three on one or anything but Fasenko didn't need a lot of room no. well he ripped that upstairs that was a bullet of a shot 
That's a great first period. It was. And you, you talked to Jim Hiller before the game talking about the importance of that first goal. They got it, and you could see just in terms of what it does for their confidence. Yeah, they're they're playing with a lot of confidence. And what a difference a few games make. <laughs> I mean, the first two games that come in, and, and Calgary was high flying and, and really taking it to them, and you know, it looked like oh, they're going to just roll right through this. And then, you know, the Americans on the strength of their goaltending on Wednesday. They get that victory, and it just changes the series so much. It's amazing how quick it can change, and I, and I guess that's why we love it so much. Uh, interesting move for tri -C. Brooks Masick out. Dryden Dow in playing just his second playoff game of the season, and he's fired into a top line with Cruz Reddick and Johnny Lazo. How about that? Yeah. Right into the fire. Right into the fire. Here you go. <laughs> hey, you couldn't play with uh, better guys. Yeah, I mean, well, absolutely. It's, it's put in there with some really good guys, so I, I guess you skate, find some open ice, and get your stick on the ice because those guys will find you. All right, nice job, Cam. We're going to uh, take a look, of course, at the other teams trying to make it to the Memorial Cup. We already know about Windsor being there and the St. John Sea Dogs. They even up the QMJHL final, winning 3-2 in overtime. And that series is tied at two games apiece. If you want to stay up to date on our game, follow the players, teams, coaches, even the referees, perhaps, go to whl.ca. Very entertaining first period of play here in Calgary. 1-1 the score as we rejoin Dan Russell and Bill Wilms upstairs with their thoughts after one period. Guys? Not only entertaining, Dan, from my uh, perspective, the best Tri-City period yeah. that we've seen in the entire series uh, to take nothing away from uh, what they did in Game 4, but that was the Tri-City Americans with a lot of purpose. Yeah, exactly, and they're so good in the offensive zone, and when they're forechecking and doing that work down low in that Calgary zone, they've been trouble for anybody and everybody. This is the difference. They stay on the puck. There's puck support. Not only the first guy on it, they get guys going to the front of the net support. And we'll show you two or three of these things happening here. They get first man in, watch the second man come in and support right along the boards. Good job. You get three guys in a zone like that, you're getting puck support. The Calgary defense have got trouble with that. And you get the support from your defense. Blue is able to pinch, keep that play alive. Again, watch the threesome here. We're going to stop it at one spot. Let her go. Keep going. And you'll see that perfect. There. Stop. Count. One, two, three. Tri-City Americans in blue. That's the puck support. That little triangle has to shift all over the offensive zone. They were able to do that. And then eventually leads to a goal. Jones mishandles that puck a little bit. Two guys behind the net. Try to almost avoid a collision. Sylvester and Wilson and Adam Huseman jumps, really jumps on that puck and gives them a one nothing lead. Good job, individual effort, Misha Pasenko. I gotta believe as much as we've been talking about Petrusky, and as good as he's been, he'd want that one back. Although it was a terrific shot above the glove hand. And that's the scoring in that first period. Much better Tri-City period. Nine different Tri-City Americans had shots. Three for Shinneman, four for Joel Broda on the Calgary Hitman side. So it's 1-1 one, one after one. The second period of game five coming up on Shaw right after this. Welcome back to the WHL Championship Series on Shaw. Dan Russell alongside Bill Wilms. Here we are in game number five. How did we get here? Well, the uh, Calgary Hitman sure exploded early with a 7-0 win. Four goals in a 4-44 span of the first period of game one. Then in game two, Calgary won 4-1. Another big start for them. And then a 4-1 win again in game number three. Three goals in the first. Tri-City with Pachurski making 40 saves. Shinneman and Messier getting two points each in that 4-2 win. And here they have 14 more shots. And at this particular point, you gotta think that they, they seem to have now clicked, Bill. They found, you, you mentioned this the other day when we were in Kennewick, that we saw them transform back to the Tri-City Americans when they started getting their confidence. And we're seeing that now. Yeah, and, and it's funny how Jim Hiller, he said so so clearly and succinctly, he said, we got to get a big game out of our goaltender, number one. We have to score first, we have to score on our power play. And all those things add up together to confidence. And the reason, Dan, is that they've ridden that all season long. That's been their modus operandi. That is just the way they've worked. And Cruz Reddick is such a key part of that that hockey club and he's a leader in there he's you know he's only 5'8 
But Cruz Reddick is so much about character that he's one of those guys that you have to have on your team, regardless of his size. And I believe he's doing a terrific job of leading this hockey club. He scored goals in the very first two playoff games against Chilliwack, and he has scored goals in the last two here against Calgary. And this is his 55th career WHL playoff game. As we start this second period, teams are at full strength. Calgary in the white with possession, and here's Michael Stone. Speaking of games played, 72 now for Stone. And translate that, that's like an entire new season. You play 72 regular season games. So Stone's had all these great regular seasons in Calgary, plus the equivalent of another full regular season just based on games played in the playoffs. Shattuck trying to reach the puck. Bubnik, too. Don't you think they've got to get something from Shattuck and Bubnik tonight, Bill? At some point, you, I find it hard to believe that this Calgary team could continue to go without having Bubnik and Shattuck involved on the score sheet. Shattuck's done eight games without a goal. Bubnik's gone 15 games without a goal. And it just seems from the Hitman standpoint, Dan, that if that line isn't going great, the strength and the depth of their line, they're getting their three other lines producing well for them. But in this kind of a game, in this kind of a series, if it goes much longer, they're going to have to have those guys step up. Not saying they're hurting them. No, I and mean, we've said that every time. We've qualified it every time. But it is amazing to me how little they've shown up in terms of goals. Some assists, but Shattuck to go that long, eight games, and Bubnik, of course, has had trouble. We've outlined that a few times. There's a centering pass, intercepted, and the Hitmen are out of their own zone. Leading the way is Broda. Broda gathering some speed on his backhand, going hard, and it almost got to his forehead. What a nice rush up the ice by Broda, but he didn't finish it off. Meantime, back the other way for the Tri-City Americans is Kennedy. Or uh, check that, that was Phaser, and he got no further than the line, but he is chasing the puck. Lazo as well. McKenzie's got it. Off the glass, down the ice. McKenzie will ice it for Calgary faceoff all the way back. I mentioned on an earlier broadcast that Joel Broda told me that the Washington Capitals who drafted him have given him permission to talk to other clubs. You know how well he shoots. You know how well he can play the penalty kill. How about how well this guy skates? Is that a bit of an underrated skater? If you don't think Joel Broda can move, somebody out there's got to take a real solid look at that young man. He'll make you a deal. You'll say, you sign me to a contract, I'll cut my hair. <laughs> Will he get assist, Bill, or does that matter? Long shot, knocked down. He's got a, well, there's a long pass for Schultz. Will he what? Well, get assists. I mean, uh, he gets a lot of goals. I think he's got 13 goals, four assists. Doesn't show up on that side of the leg for a lot, but boy, does he ever shoot the puck well. Well, the thing where he does get assists, he's not the greatest playmaker. You know, let, let's be honest in terms of what we've seen, but you're going to get a lot of... Uh, assists on collecting his garbage because he gets that shot on the net. There's a lot of junk laying around for guys to put in the net. Wilson, Cowan, now Kozen, Kozen, the Fisenko shot turned aside. Kozen collects it once more. Brandon Kozen back to the line. Here's Nyron's shot up high. That hits something on the way. I don't think it got all the way to Pachurski. And now it's swept around the boards and out by the Americans. Icing on Tri City. If in Niren you talk about passing, you talk about skating, you talk about determination, what a change in this young man's game. The thing with Giffen Niren, he cannot ever play a worried game. Like he can never be concerned about, you know, carrying that puck too much or where he's going with it because he, that's not part of his game. He's not going to make the safe easy play he's got terrific imagination to his game and that's why you got to let him loose you got to cut him that slack because he will help you in the finals he's really helping he's plus six in this championship series and points in three straight games as Huseman goes in on the backhand Jones blockers that one away Burgard nice pass on the take to Fiddler Fiddler with Royer Royer winding up shoots and Paczerski with good positioning holds it and he braced himself for some snow coming his way, but the snow shower never really did. This is the difference, you see, with the Tri-City Americans only getting one man in deep on this rush. There's no puck support. This is the difference now. Now you get the Hitman coming out of their own zone. They want that. They want to come up the ice in numbers. They'll get that shot on Ed Paczerski with a save. Early stages, second period. And Paczerski now faced 127 shots in this final 
mopping up in games one and two and then the starts the rest of the way and he's only allowed 11 goals on 127 shots. You know, going back to that National Hockey League game that uh, he played, he wore Mark andre Fleury's pads. There was some question about his pads being legal and what I really liked about it, when he went in during the game, referee Brad Meyer bent down in the crease and asked him his name. He said, it's Alex. He says, welcome to the National Hockey League, Alex. I mean, that's kind of cool. A great story. And you know what? Dan, his mom got the phone call that he was playing in his National Hockey League game. She called his grandma. She went right to church, straight to church to pray for him. <laughs> Here's Reddick. Well, when you got somebody like Sammy Sa I mean, Michael Stone can shoot the puck, but when Sammy Salo's right in your face yeah. winding up and shooting it, uh, those are good stories. Well, you heard uh, Jim Hiller talking about Bob Torrey and the job he did getting him out of Russia. It wasn't uh, going to be easy. They weren't sure they could get all the paperwork done. I talked about it the other night. He played in three different leagues this year, the KHL, the WHL, and the NHL. But they're sure happy they got him. And I think certainly to this point in this series, he's been a, diff you know, a difference maker. This game settling down at this stage early in the second. Here comes Nyren going in. Nyren on this backhand and goes wide of the net. I think if you gave Nyron five or ten more minutes last game, he might have willed his team all the way back. <laughs> exactly what I thought, too. Bubnik with the puck. See, there's one man for checking. Not sure you'll get the job done. That's what the Hitmen thrive on. One man forching with a forechecking with the puck on Nyron's stick, it's gonna end up where it is right now, probably nine out of ten times. Americans coming out of their own zone. Sutherland, pass to Jarrett Toll. Toll shoots it in from center. Now on the far side, Stebner in a foot race with Messier. Sylvester trying to poke it off the board. Stebner gets it once more. And here he comes out of his own zone. Backhands it in high. He got to center, so there was no icing. Paczerski will leave it, but Brodus intercepts it. Tries to send it in front for Schultz. Couldn't do so. Ploof will try this side. Almost lost it again to Broda. Or, yes, to Broda. Joel Broda doing a good job there. <laughs> Causing some fits, actually. From back of that net. Now here's Kosterman. Nice pinch by the defenseman. Americans get it, however. Can they get it out? Lazo. Out to the neutral zone, but Broda back. Rolls it in. Tired at the end of the shift, he'll head to the bench. Booth starting out, just past the five minute mark of the second period. Out of the zone, zone is Ewan. And the longer it goes, the more references we'll have to, well, the Spokane Chiefs are the only team to ever come back from 3 0. You know, Mike Williamson, the Calgary coach, is part of the Portland coaching staff. The who's who of coaches in that series. Brent Peterson was there, Mike Babcock. Here comes Cowan in over the line. Cowan throwing it towards the front of the net, but Jared told him a good job defensively. Goes back here to Stebner, shot. The flex on the way, and Paczerski makes a good save. Stebner again, shoots it up high. Americans are on it. And here comes Holland, out to center. Holland with Mestery. Mestery takes the pass, shot, misses the far corner. Royer trying to gobble it up and go back the other way. Draws on the back check, but Royer following it up. Plays it back of the net. Royer couldn't get a stick on it, nor could Fiddler. Draws with a good defensive play, plays it around this side. Stone pitches, holds it in, shoots it wide of the goal. Burgard chasing it down in that corner. Mestery checked off the puck. Royer couldn't get himself in front, but Burgard with position now. Burgard. Fighting off check, back to the line. Nyron holding, shooting it wide of the net. Rebound! And Paczerski stopped. Royer at the side of the net. Here's Stone shooting, it scores! A bullet of a shot by Michael Stone, and Calgary has a 2-1 lead. I don't know what line these guys are penciled in on, but Mackenzie Royer is gonna make a pass from deep inside the zone, 
all the way off the boards. It's gonna be picked up by Stone, the front of the net, terrific screen by Rigby Burgard. There's no way, none, zero, nothing that Pachersky could do about that. He's got a big body right in front of him. Then the reason Stone has scored this goal, in my opinion, is I think the Tri-City Americans in the first seven minutes of this second period have got away from what they did in that first period. They haven't been aggressive on the forecheck. They've allowed the Hitman to come out. And once Calgary establishes play inside your zone, they will make these kind of plays. Wow, what a shot by Michael Stone. Here's the announcement. Assistant number 25, Rigby Burgers. And the number 22, Mackenzie Royer. Time of the goal, six minutes, 43 seconds. Wow, you look at those uh, players on the assist, the grinding that they did there. That was amazing. And I got thinking how Stone had the last two shots that went in the net initially announced to him, taken away. They're not taking that one away. No chance. There was no discussion about, did that hit something? The discussion is, could anybody see it? And the Phoenix Coyotes are, you know, not that strong on defense in terms of their depth. You gotta believe Michael Stone might have a spot on that team sooner than later. Jones turns to the side to shot, so Calgary has their first lead of this game. They've led in the series for 150 minutes. Tri-City, with their one minute lead tonight, have led 51 minutes during the championship series. Shot from a sharp angle. In there is Dryden Dow. Dryden spells his name D-R-Y-D-N, no E, but he is named after Ken Dryden, according to his parents, the legendary one. Lead pass by Sylvester off the board, but he's on his own side of center, so that's icing, and we're gonna go downstairs now to Cam Moon. Yeah, Brandon Cozen went to the Calgary Hitman dressing room. Uh, I feel like he was hobbling a bit there. Will McMillan, uh, the athletic therapist, took him to the dressing room. I don't know if he got hit with a stick or twisted it or something, but. Uh, certainly was hobbling on his way there, and I guess we'll see if he returns in this game, but looked like he was under a little bit of duress. First time, Bill, he's gone back-to-back -back games without a point in these playoffs, Brandon Cozen, who still needs one more assist to pass Brad Moran. He had it, and then they took it away on one of those stone goals that I just referenced. Yeah, he's such a good passer. That's why he makes, you know, he has so many assists. you got to be so sharp when you're on the ice with... Uh, Brandon Cozen, you'll put pucks on your stick. 22 assists in the playoffs, only the eight goals, but he is such a creative passer. But boy, as we referenced earlier, he's, he's taken a pretty much of a physical pounding in this series. And this isn't a big Tri-City team. Stone gets the puck inside the line. So how do you want Tri-City to react if you're an Americans fan right now? Well, go back and you know do what you do, did in the first period. Got pucks deep, you had the four check, you, Created some turnovers. You were creative. You had pressure. That's a one and out now. Yeah, I mean, we marveled at their first period. But there's always these adjustments that are made. And maybe Calgary has come out doing a couple things differently in terms of getting the puck in deep. And we just referenced Coase and Bill. There's the rest of the scoring leaders. Seems like every you ever look at for any kind of score he's gonna have Brandon Cozen's name up at the top. Shinneman now in second place as uh, he surpassed Craig Cunningham. I think this is a big shift right here for the Tri-City Americans. That face off in that zone. Well you that see? didn't last long. No there's no and look pressure. at this chance for Schultz as he cuts in. Oh he just slid it wide. And the man draped over him the puck went wide of the net. The man went into the net, that being Schultz, and the net itself coming off its support. Well, let's go back to that face-off. They got to win the draw if you're the Americans, but Calgary does such a good job of coming up the ice with it. There's your face-off win. Nice little turn. That defenseman actually skates away for two checks, makes a head man pass, and once the Calgary hitmen are able to advance the puck up the ice with those passes and get it to guys that are going to the net, you talk about chin down going to the net, that's the only way Ian Schultz knows how to take that puck to the post. And I, as much as anything, Dan, that, that's such a confidence builder for the Calgary hitmen to win that face off and come out of their own zone, not only break out and get puck out into the neutral ice area, get that kind of scoring chance. Mm. Well, as we documented earlier in the series, the Americans 0 for 3 now in the Saddledome this year. 
There's a chance at the side of the net. And outscored badly in those three games. Wilson now from the line holding it. There's Shattuck behind the goal. Shattuck tries to get it in front. Couldn't. And back the other way comes Messier. Messier in over the line. Chance for Lazo and his shot. Save. Rebound. And that is knocked down before it got to the net. Shinneman goes there for the rebound. Here goes Shattuck trying to get loose. He's going to draw a penalty as Schmidt held him. Shattuck tried to go around him. That'll be interference. And the Hitmen are getting their third power play of game five. This time the Americas do come up the ice. They come up with some force. They come up the ice in a few numbers. Nothing great. Wasn't the greatest scoring chance, but it was a good chance. And that's something they got to build off. That's only their third shot this period for the Tri-City Americans on this rush. They get it. The original shot, even a, 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 a pretty good save by Jones. Look how square he is to that play. Now you see Schmidt gets caught. He, he's skating forward, number 23 for Tri-City Americans. He's got to put the brakes on because he's got Shattuck coming around him. He takes a penalty. Third power play of the hockey game for the Hitmen, who are now 4 for 12 in the championship series. Sorry, 4 for 13 is been corrected on that stat. There's Vesenko now back to the line. Shot, score! Stone again! And it's a bullet again. Man, how do you stop that kind of shot? High to the stick side. A power play goal, 3-1 for the Hitman. When you take that puck into the offensive zone, it is important to always skate hard with it. For sake of along the boards, now you gotta pull up, stop. Everybody forgets about Stone. Look at him, he's so wide open. The reason for that is Fasenko had scored on that rush earlier with that shot. When he throws the brakes on in the offensive zone, it moves all that play over towards him. The focus is all on Fasenko, and you can't, folks. You can't ever forget about Michael Stone. He'll kill you with that shot from that spot. Fifth of the playoffs, scored by number 28, Michael Stone. Assistant number 10, Misha Fasenko. And the number 17, Giffen Nyron. Time of the goal, nine minutes, 57 seconds. We thought Stone was the best Calgary hitman in this series before this two goal performance tonight. They'll do an MVP afterwards, and they'll do it for the entire playoffs. But if you just took this series alone, you'd sure be looking hard at Michael Stone. I think both of us independently have come up with that. And those are two huge goals by the veteran on their team. Here's a chance for Tri-City. A shot over top the net. That was Brown taking the shot. Brown gets it down low. But being checked off the puck was Fazer. And now it's shot in by Royer with nine minutes to go in the second period. Calgary up 3-1 in the series and 3-1 tonight. Foucault back to Wilson. Shot through traffic. That's knocked down. Bubnik racing for it. Bubnik now to Foucault. Foucault holding it. Foucault putting it to the corner. Shattuck gets it. Back to the line. Here's Stone. His shot. That's knocked down. And if we weren't going to a TV timeout on the next break, the coach Tri-City Americas might consider using his timeout as uh, their team is spending way too much time in their own zone. And here's another chance for Wilson. Knocked off his stick, but the Americans come back. Can Lazo make something happen? Lazo holding it. Passes. Oh, and it goes off the stick of Shinneman. What a golden chance for Shinneman. It just bounced off his stick. Shinneman again, throws it to the net. Lazo on the rebound, and Jones looks like he's got it, and he's gonna hold on to it with a big pile up in his goal crease, and the Americans come that close to pulling back to within one. 8.03 to go, second period, game five. Michael Stone with a pair in the Hitman lead, 3-1 on Shaw. What do you think? Joel, the Hitman have come out flying here in the second period. What was the message after the first? Well, we had uh, obviously a lot of pent up energy to start the game, had a few opportunities and didn't cash in on it. Tri-Cities had their feet moving and came, uh, came probably away with a better first period than we did. 
We just tried to get our emotions back in check, get ourselves ready, play it simple, and we've been successful so far. Michael Stone with a couple of goals in this one and shoots the puck as hard as anybody. Talk about his play. Well, absolutely, but uh, he, he can certainly shoot the puck, as we all know. He, he Two great shots, but we had presence in front of the net on both goals, so finally we've got some traffic in front of a pretty good goaltender. Joel, thanks for this. Yep. Dry City Americas have done a pretty good job of getting pucks to Shinneman. Top of your screen, he hasn't had the greatest luck. In that spot, how does he mishandle it? He's got to chase it down. But now you got the Calgary Hitman standing around a little bit, and they get one more shot at the net. Get pucks to the net, charge the net, go for the net. This time, Martin Jones, the sole responsibility of why this game stays 3-1 for the Calgary Hitman. Shinneman just so anxious, trying so hard, trying to get his team back in it. You've seen some nerves when he doesn't handle the puck cleanly, because that's their leading scorer in the season, 82 points. Here's Cole now, putting the puck down low to Cruz Reddick, behind the net. Messier trying to work his way in front. Reddick, Messier, or Wilgosh, I should say. Wilgosh trying to come up, oh, there's a punch that seemed to get high, or at least a glove into Reddick's facial area. That went undetected. Here comes Stone, Stone shoots! Oh, and Pachersky gets his arm on it. Almost a natural hat trick by Stone, the defenseman. That's a heavy, heavy shot. Pachersky saw that one, though. I'll bet he's still feeling it as well. Remember that highlight not too long ago where Michael Stone blocked five or six shots in one sequence on the penalty kill? Yeah. Five on three at one point. I mean, when a defenseman can sacrifice his body to block shots the way it is, does that, and also has the ability to fire pucks the way he has here tonight. That's a special player, believe you me. Michael Stone watched his two goals, came into the tonight's game in this series as a leading scorer with five assists. He's just dying to get that chance. That's a goal that made it 2-1 for the Calgary Hitman. Pasenko with his pull-up, tons of room over there. What a blast, what a shot. Terrific player, Michael Stone. 6.50 to go in the second period. Pretty essential, the Americans score next, Bill. And they'd sure love to get one before the end of this period. Don't want to be trailing by two going to the third. Especially when you only have two goals in this building in the entire series. One tonight and one back in game two. Dan, they had 14. Well, here's a giveaway, and Fiddler scores! Wow, what an unfortunate turnover. What a great forecheck by Fiddler, and boy, is he rewarded. And he scores a huge 4-1 goal. Brendan Shinneman guilty of mishandling this puck. He's been so good for this team, but when you're the last man back and you get the gap closed on you to that extent, Zach Ewan had made himself available for a pass from Shinneman. Zach Ewan had no idea that Shinneman would lose that puck. What a great forehand backhand upstairs. 4-1 goal. Dan, the Tri-City Americans had 14 shots in period one. They've had four in this period so far. And again, they look nervous to me. 23, Tyler Fiddler. Unassisted. Time of the goal, 13 and minutes. And pardon me for saying, but that is Fiddler in the room. Yeah. Unassisted goal, 13-34, a 4-1 lead. And the three goals coming in about a six-minute span. Schultz trying to reach that puck. And it's been quite a turnaround because the first period, if you weren't with us, the Americans had their best period of the series. They had 14 shots. They, Jones had to make a lot of good saves in that first period. A lot of them in tight. A lot of them real fast where, where, where his reflexes had to be good or else it might have been not one all, but maybe two or three one for the Americans. But quite a turnaround here in the second period. And we talked before about how the Americans want to get one back to make it a 3-2 game. Now it is essential they score next, that's for sure. 
as the puck goes down the ice, and even then it's going to be a tall order. Yeah, no question, and there's nothing to build off as far as I'm concerned. In this period, they were getting guys in front of the net. Well, we followed a lot of WHL finals in the last, what, five or six years on Shaw. We've had the pleasure of bringing these two. It started back in 05, the Rockets winning in Brandon. Well, I'm not going to insult your intelligence to read, but from that uh, chart, you'll see Calgary possibly tonight with a win could be back-to-back -back teams that are able to win this championship on home ice. Kelowna doing it. And Medicine Hat Tigers doing it in 07. Chance at the sharp angle. Jones makes the save. That was Huseman who took the shot. Pushing and shoving. Ensues. And Jones with the puck. And a faceoff will originate in Calgary territory. You know, he does have a great shot. At. Huseman can release that puck and get it away in a hurry. But, you know, again, I mean, Martin Jones is so cool. He's so calm. Just holds it position up against the post and you know just says you know nothing doing doesn't look like Martin Jones he ever wilts under any kind of a workload and he offers it I mean every game I watch him he offers that calm that cool that presence and uh, his team just thrives off that they're so confident in him back there he captured the Western Canadian Bantam Championship for the North Shore Winter Club in 0304 won a BC major midget league title with the North Vancouver or the Northwest Giants in 06. Back in 03, a BC Pee Wee provincial title, as well as uh, the NHL division of the 03 Quebec International Pee Wee Hockey Tournament. He's had some winning, and it looks like tonight, if this score holds up, obviously, he'll be a championship goaltender for the Calgary Hitman. Does it so matter of factly? Now they're winning faceoffs, the Hitman. You see, and I try to point that out probably while well, here you go. Sasenko cutting in, holding, and his shot goes wide of the net. Calgary player fell, but the puck's underneath him. That's Cowan. Sasenko going in there hard. You know what? Sasenko's been a real valuable member of this Hitman team throughout these entire playoffs. I, I, I just marveled about his work ethic at both ends of the ice. Just had another good shift there. He scored the first goal tonight for Calgary when they were down 1-0. Kind of flies under the radar for Senko, but he's been good. Well, like I said, three goals uh, was the leading goal scorer in this series coming into tonight's game. So make that his fourth of this series, the power play goal that he scored. And what a great pass he made to Michael Stone earlier on that 3-1, which turns out to be a huge goal. That Michael Stone power play goal that made it 3-1 on the Fasenko pass that was a significant goal. Once you get the Price City Americans down two on the road, it makes that a tough, tough hill to climb, boy. Jones misplays the puck at the side of the net. Messier over on the far side, but Sylvester has it. Sends it down the ice. Did that hit something on the way? No, it did not. So that's icing called on Calgary. There's 3.55 to go, second period. Both teams, by the way, with 19 shots on goal. Yeah, you mentioned the last win for the Tri-City Americans in this building was back on January 20th in 08. They won a 3-2 shootout against the Calgary Hitmen. Haven't had a lot of success here. Had a terrific first period. Don't want to belabor that point. Games aren't 20 minutes. You don't get to take your skates off after 20 and go home. You've got to maintain that. They did that for 20, and now they got themselves in a significant hole. And here comes Broda out of his own zone. Broda with 13 goals in the playoffs, tries to give and go. Dumps the puck, Schultz in that corner, Broda and Schultz. Here comes Schultz off the corner boards, poked off his stick. The puck goes out of play. Joel Broda after the game the other night, Bill, when they lost, we don't view it as a wasted opportunity. We're just looking forward to the opportunity in front of us to win a championship at home and I, I got thinking you know this is their 40th playoff game in two years they got a lot of experience one loss you know they've gone through stuff before and, and they kind of even a first period which wasn't their best I think we're seeing a lot of their experience come through yeah. here no that's exactly right and Joel Broder will go to the front of the list he's gone two games now the last two without a goal he went the first two games against Moose Jaw without a goal since then he's never gone more than once without scoring there's a long shot by Stebner. That deflects to the goalie, turned to the side. Incidentally, we still have not seen the return of Brandon Cozen. 
Cam Moon monitoring that situation down between the benches. Shot in by Schmidt. Over on the far side, it's Jimmy Bubnick. Now to Stebner. Around here to Shattuck. And Otto Schmidt from the line. Long shot. Oh, and Jones had to be sharp to see that. But again, that good positioning by Jones. Even if you don't see it, you're going to make some good saves. And I'm not saying he didn't see it. But there's Shattuck taking a shot. Just always marvel about Jones' positioning. And well coached. And he must learn well, too. Shinneman. Gets the puck up. Will Gosh sent it in. Nyron first to it. Late stages, second period. Nyron almost popped up the puck. Shinneman on him. Throws it in front. Oh, what a save by Jones as Messier came in and Nyron did end up popping up the puck. Great play by Shinneman to get it in front. And Jones with the save up high. And again, great positioning starting for Jones to be able to make that save. That's the danger that you do see with the Americans. When they do get a turnover, they move that puck to the front of the net in a hurry. You're not going to see Nyron mishandle that puck that much, but that was good forechicken by Shinneman. Even better job coming to the net by Messier. Stone tries to get it out. He did not the first time. He'll wrap it around this near side. It does come out to the neutral zone. Cowan trying to dig it, so was Schultz. As they continue to fight for possession. The Americans get the puck in. Stone trying to get it out. Got it to Cowan. Cowan. Now Schultz. Sylvester trying to get the puck. Schultz was hit. By the way, it comes back to Wilson. Wilson winds up, shoots. Did that go in or did it hit the post? I think it just hit the post. It deflected. And then came right back to Pachurski. I don't know. I mean, Bill, from here, you, you wonder. Well, let's have a look. I tell you what, the whole thing was set up. No, that's a post. But Cody Sylvester, what, what a job on the forecheck. He absolutely jumps in there to get that puck that ends up coming back to the point. And, and you know, sometimes when you forecheck the way Sylvester did on that particular play, all he did is he threw it back towards his own blue line. Ended up right on a defenseman stick. That close to being 5-1 for Calgary. Lead pass up for Holland. McKenzie takes out Holland. Huseman follows up, throws it right off the goal mouth. Calgary starts back the other way. It is Broda again. Broda shoots it wide. Looks like he was shooting it wide on purpose. Centering pass for Sylvester. Stick lifted nicely. Now Holland can't get out. Nyron out here at center as we're in the final minute of a second period that's been dominated by Calgary with three goals. And now a 4-1 lead as they snap the 1-1 tie. Bubnik shoots the puck back in again. Pachurski will leave it back in the net. Schmidt plays it around this side. High along the boards, down the ice. This might be icing, and it is. Jimmy Bubnik's brother, Michael, was a member of that 99 championship team here in Calgary. And as you say, he's had a little bit of trouble scoring, but he's one of those guys that'll go right through a guy. He doesn't uh, take too many routes out, but I'm sure brother Michael's watching closely to see how young Jimmy's gonna do, and that was that great 99 team we talked about earlier. Here's Shattuck and Bubnik's numbers. Here's Vesenko from back of the net. 18 seconds to go in the period. Back to the line, Stone holds it in. Stone couldn't get the puck to the net. Now Redick, lead pass. Here's Lazo holding, rolls off his stick. McKenzie plays it back of the net. Stone, appropriate that he would touch the puck last in the period because he was the star of the period. Stone, who had five assists in this series heading into game number five, gets two goals in the second period as part of a three-goal outburst in a span of six minutes and 51 seconds. And Calgary will take a three-goal lead into the third period of game number five. Let's go back downstairs now to Dan Elliott. Thank you very much, Dan. Coming up in the second intermission, we'll hear from Hitman defenseman Matt McKenzie through 40 minutes of play. We'll go one-on-one -on -one with former Hitman owner Brett the Hitman Hart 
plus Cam Moon will be here to go inside the WHL. We'll discuss the restructuring going on in Regina after today's press conference, plus we'll have all the highlights through 40 minutes of play. Do not go anywhere. It's the Hitmen leading the Americans 4-1 after two. One, the Calgary Hitmen leading here after 40 minutes of play. Matt McKenzie, our guest. Matt, what a great period for the Hitmen. It looked like you guys were really jacked up for that period. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, in the first, they uh, they came out pretty hard. They gave It was a pretty good period. And uh, I think we wanted to simplify our game a bit, and I think we did that in the second. We got more shots on net, got a little more traffic, and uh, luckily we got some bounces. Is that the key to solving Kucherski? Played so well on Wednesday's game, played very well in that first period. Is that the key, traffic? Yeah, for sure. He's a great goalie when uh, when he sees the puck, and uh, we got a lot of big forwards up front who can uh, get their get their butt in front of him, and uh, and lucky enough, Stoner uh, got a few goals, which was great to see. Yeah, he shoots it pretty well. Yeah, for sure. I uh, I should start taking tips after practice. <laughs> yeah, he's got that dialed in. Your, your focus for the third period here, you're, you're up three, but and you have to assume the, the Americans are going to come out pretty hard in the third. Yeah, for sure. It's their season on the line, so uh, we won't expect anything less than their best. So uh, we got to go in the, the room and regroup and make sure we come out uh, really hard in the third and finish, close this up. Matt, thanks for this. No problem. Matt McKenzie of the Calgary Hitmen. They're up 4-1 here after 40 as we send it to Dan Elliott. All right, thank you very much, Cam Moon. I'm here pleased to be joined by a man who needs no introduction. I first saw him back in 1987 as a member of Hart Foundation wrestling the British Bulldogs at Winnipeg Arena. Brett the Hitman Hart, how you doing? I'm doing really good. It's a great night. Great night to be down here. What do you think of the game so far as the hometown Hitman have got a pretty good lead going in the third? You know, I had a strong feeling that tonight was going to be the night. What was the feeling? You just, just had it? I had a feeling that we would run right over top of it tonight. Your former owner of this club, of course, the uh, the name comes from your marker in the WWF. Uh, what was it about junior hockey that you wanted to get involved originally bringing this team to Calgary? Oh, I just said it was always, um, you know, when my dad used to have the Stampede Wrestling, I always thought it really connected a lot of the, uh, you know, the cities across the prairies. And so, with junior hockey, uh, a lot of times when we wrestled on the road, I would I would take in games in Regina and Moose Jaw and stuff like that. And I just always saw a nice connection between what I did with Stampede Wrestling and how uh, my junior hockey has done that for uh, players in the, uh, the WHL and go to the NHL. You're not an owner anymore, but you're still a big fan. Do you get out to a lot of games? I got season's tickets. I try to come every chance I get. Now, in terms of uh, this team here, they're trying to uh, win another championship. Were you there in 99? Did you get a chance to see when they won back uh, 11 years ago? Tonight, exactly, is when they won the WHL championship. Yeah, I was, I was here. I was, I was lucky enough to get invited on the ice and uh, take a picture with the team and the trophy and all that. It was a very, very special night. And, uh, you know, I've always said about this team, this team has got a lot of heart and it's got a... It's just something special about this team, and I think they're gonna. This is the night that uh, it'll be another night of celebrations tonight. You've had a fantastic career in wrestling. You've done some theater. You've written a book. Book rather. What are you up to these days? I'm working on another book and still uh, dabbling in uh, the wrestling a little bit. Uh, I had mended the fences with the WWE, and you know I've had a lot of fun with that. For, but I, I don't know how long I can uh, milk that one. Keep it going. <laughs> I'll have some fun anyway. Well, good to see you. Thank you very much for stopping by and enjoy the rest of the game. Hope it's a big night for you and the Calgary Hitmen. Go Hitmen, go. All right, Brett the Hitmen. Hart, we got to take a quick break. More to come from here at the South Dome. Hitmen, 20 minutes away from wrapping this up and winning their second ever WHL championship. Welcome back to the Ben Girls South Dome. The Calgary Hitmen leading the Tri City Americans 4 1 after two minutes of play, 20 minutes away from taking this to a WHL championship final. Michael Stone, a pair of big shots in that second wow. to pick up of those two goals. Unbelievable. I, like, yeah. he's, he shoots it as hard as, as anybody in the league. He probably has one of the hardest shots in the Western Hockey League. If he gets that kind of room and, and able to 
to get in top of the circle. It either hits the goalie or it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, we're going to get back to this game in a moment, but some big news coming out of the Regina today. The Pats and Brent Parker relinquishing his uh, job as the general manager to stay on as the president. They don't have a new GM in place yet. They're going to go on a search, but first, Cam, your thoughts on Brent Parker stepping down after 15 years yeah, as a GM? I've been there a long time uh, as a GM, of course, uh, part of the, the ownership of, uh, with his uh, dad, Russ Parker, yeah. as the uh, primary owner of the Regina Pats. And, you know, there's... It's been rumors, rumblings, the worst kept secret, whatever. Yeah, secret in the league. Exactly. I mean, it, it was. It looked like it was coming, and that's exactly what came today. So, I, I wasn't overly surprised by it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do as as far as bringing someone in. If uh, they go to uh, someone that maybe there was a former Regina Pat, if they uh, go that way, or, or somebody with some National Hockey League experience, or maybe with a lot of Western Hockey League experience. Now, of course, the rumor mill will just start going rampant no. as to who's going in. Well, it already has. Everybody oh. keeps talking about Chad Lang. Yes. But there's been rumors about him going to Swift Current as well. So, I mean... This, this is the fun of it. You want to throw any names in there? Else, you got anything? No, I, I, I honestly, right I've now, heard the yeah. Chad Lang, of yeah. course, but we've heard him going everywhere. Everywhere, absolutely. Yeah. So you got to think he's going somewhere. <laughs> you hope for his sake. Well, yeah, he did. A, he did a really good job yeah. in Moose Shot, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he does go somewhere. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in Regina. But yeah, we figured at some point this was going to come down that uh, Brent Parker would would step back from the club a little bit, or at least from the hockey operations yeah. side of it, and uh, and he did. Okay, well, one question with regards to that. The person who does come in and take over as GM, uh, it could be a bit of a tough situation, considering the fact that Brent Parker, former GM, president, overseeing anything. I mean, there's some guys who say, I want all the power in the world, but you maybe have a guy look over the shoulder a little bit. Yeah, yeah I think it'll be difficult. It'll be hard for Brent to step just exactly. completely. Step away. Uh, being hands-on and, of yeah. course, with uh, the family ownership, uh, the team means a lot to him. So for him to completely yeah. back off and not have anything to do with it might be really difficult. So, yeah, whoever comes in as uh, the general manager, <laughs> you, little, might, little, you might need a little patience. Yeah. <laughs> because little, for Brent, that might be tough to, to step back. A little bit of a learning curve. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the Calgary Hitmen and their so-called fourth line, Mackenzie Rohr. Rigby Burkhart, uh, uh, Fiddler on that line as well. We saw him get a big goal in uh, game four. Looked like it was going to uh, help him out. Obviously lost game. But then again tonight, a big goal here in the second period. Burkhart right in front. Royer involved. Fiddler getting the goal. I mean, you call it a fourth line, yeah. but these guys are doing a lot of great work. Well, and that, that's why Calgary's so good. I mean, they've, they've got this unbelievable depth. And you know, Cody Beach played on that line most of the playoffs in the first two games of this series and now out with an injury so so you got another guy there that is also very effective a very physical player Burgart plays a very physical mm -hmm. role and, and obviously Tyler Fiddler has some touch around the net because he made a, oh. a great move on Pachersky to put that thing upstairs yeah that a fourth line in name only because yeah. that's that's not your typical situation in the Western League more often than not you've got a, a physical player out there that that maybe doesn't have quite the touch that you'd like, or or some young guys on your fourth line that are just getting their just getting their feet wet in the league. This, doing, this is a pretty good yeah, line, and doing a lot of chip and chase, and just you know, yeah. make sure you don't do anything in their in batting your own end. Don't it, take a minus. Well, yeah, and yeah. don't take a bad penalty. But yeah. these guys are creating opportunities as well. Oh yeah, they, if given the opportunity, and and they'll score, and they will create. Like they're. And, and that's why if they have success. I mean, if they get out there against the other team's fourth line, in, in some cases, I mean, teams that aren't as deep. I mean, Tri-City's pretty deep team, obviously, or they, they wouldn't be in the WHL final. But you go up against other clubs that don't have the same depth, wow, well, they're going to dominate. Well, that's going to be the, always the difference between a lot of teams is their depth and the Calgary Hitman once yeah. again proving it tonight. If you want to stay up to date, on the Western Hockey League, there's only one place to go. You know it. It's whl.ca. Calgary have been 20 minutes away from winning their second WHL championship title in franchise history, all on the strength of an unbelievable second period led by Michael Stone. For all the highlights and analysis through 40 minutes, let's rejoin Dan and Bill. All right, Dan, it was a monster period by the veteran of all the veterans in this uh, WHL championship series. We've referenced 72 games. Right. Uh, so it's like a whole new season of 72 games, but... Man, oh man, can he shoot the puck. 
Yeah, he, and you know what? I think the Tri-City Americans gave him an opportunity to get involved. This is a soft forecheck by the Ams, and when you're that soft, Giffen Niren will make you pay very simple. He didn't even have to skate that hard to come out of there. You know, first period, we saw the Ams going to the net. No puck support in that situation there. Way they come. You'll see play here that Mackenzie Royer makes in a minute. Stop it, guys. I want you to watch the far top of your screen. Where does Mackenzie Royer put this puck? right across off the boards sets it up perfectly for that one-timer by stone i believe that was a blind pass through the crease by royer he was putting it off the wall for for michael stone to get that puck too that made it two to one now michael stone on a power play great job by misha Pasenko. pulls up waits all the tri-city americans on one side of the ice stone there this time it's a different shot stops it shoots it the other one you saw was a one-timer big power play goal Gives Calgary that 3-1 lead, and then Tyler Fiddler stealing that puck off Brendan Shinneman. And, you know, Shinneman's had a tough series. Let's let's be honest. He hasn't had a lot of luck around the net. Watch Shinneman's face here, and that'll probably sum up everything so far in this series. My goodness, what else could go wrong? Boy, is that the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat on that goal in those two faces? Stone had three shots on goal in that period. Eight for Calgary. And there it is, the summary. Stone, Stone, and Fiddler. Will the Hitman hold on for championship number two in their club history? We'll find out when we continue on Shaw. Welcome back to Calgary, Alberta in the WHL Championship Series on Shaw. Dan Russell, Bill Wilms, Dan Elliott, Cam Moon, you know, we, we're the people you hear from, but we have such a great team that we work with at Shaw in these playoffs all season long. In fact, but almost we become semi-family-like during the year. There's Dan Westover. We saw Cam Collingwood and Ron Radke. Uh, some of our camera operators work in the game. I saw Dan Elliott there a moment ago. Phil Harrell Harrison is on this camera there. Hello, Phil. Lots of different cameras. Calvin Bellows, Robin Ho. Over in our tape department, Andy LeBlanc, Craig Hannon, David McCall in audio, Chris Dunwall Graphics, our director, Ed Robertson, our director's assistant is Brianne Jefferson. Our executive producer is Russ Greaves, and our game producer, Dave Roberts, and Grant Wilkins, WHL Central producer. All of us, and I mean all of us, so happy to bring you these games on Shaw. We thank you, night in and night out, for supporting the WHL on Shaw. And we hope you enjoyed this period. The question is, will it be the final period of the 2010 season? The Calgary Hitman with a 4-1 lead going into the third period. And as you might well expect, they have a dominating record when leading after two. They are 13-1. The Tri-City Americans are 2-6 when they trail after the second period in these playoffs. Starting the period, teams at full strength, Stone lead pass. Here comes Broda, slowly, he'll roll it in. How much of this will they do? Dump it in, go and establish some zone time. Schultz, he's a master at doing what he's doing now. I suspect we're gonna see a lot of this in the third, where they'll try to just tie that puck up, kick it along the boards, and in the back of their mind hearing tick, tick, tick. From an American standpoint, they've gotta break it down into segments. They've gotta try to score one in the first five minutes, score one in the next five, ten minutes, and if they have their goalie out at the end of the game, that they take that right now. Meantime, Cowan stopped by Pachurski, and he holds on. You see Del Cowan quietly doing what he does best. He'll outwork you simply anywhere on the ice, along the corners, along the sidewall. He goes one-on-one, -on -one. nothing great, just a good job of outworking the defender. This is him, 24. Shouldn't have this big a chance, but he does. Look at the work, pushes him off, has a bit of a rolling puck, and then goes one-on-one -on, -one on Ploof and still gets a shot on the net. I think the Hitmen are full of guys like that. They've got a lot of guys that give you that kind of an effort. Little things sometimes that go unnoticed, Ben, but over the course of a season, over the course of a playoff, the work of a guy like Dal Cowan just gets you into the win column. Chance to go back and play the Brandon Wheat Kings if this team holds on, his old team, Brandon. Of course, he played for Prince George as well, but boy, would he love that. 
rolled in from center ice by Todd Kennedy. He gives chase to me Bubnik. And Kennedy, two former teammates in Kamloops colliding there. And Shattuck, speaking of ex-Blazers, comes up with the puck and he sends it in deep. Now Foucault's turn to grind along the end boards. Knocked off it by Plouffe. And the American Shineman weaving his way through this neutral zone. Burgart trying to check him off the puck. Did, but Shineman gets it back. Quick shot right on goal, and Jones makes the save. Let's go downstairs to Cam Moon. Uh, Brandon Cozen still not on the Calgary Hitman bench. Uh, he's been walking it off in underneath here and going without his skate on right now. So still trying to come back. At 4-1, though, I, I really doubt they'll get pushed to get back into this game and maybe uh, be there at the end if Calgary's still ahead when it's all said and done. I don't think they'll rush him back with it being 4-1. No, and I think his goal is to get back to that city that they named after him. He'd like nothing better than that. <laughs> Got so close last year, the Calgary Hitmen thought they had a real shot. Oh boy, did they ever. And you know what? Have they won that overtime game? Where Tyson Berry scored, that was such an exciting finish. That could have been a 0-3 a, a come from behind four in a rower. Dan, while I get a chance, I want to talk about Matt McKenzie. You know, he's going to the National Hockey League Combine. And I talked about how sophisticating the testing is when they take those 100 guys to the combine. It's so sophisticated, the testing, that they can now pretty much determine at what part in a hockey game your legs are going to give out. It's just amazing. It's a bit of a puke fest at times. It's that tough, but it is something that's a great predictor. I can predict mine. It would be the anthem. I believe that that would probably be it for me. Fiddler off the boards, puts it to the corner. Fiddler again. Boy, they love playing with a lead, don't they? Uh, I mean, it's... They're going to do this all period, and I wouldn't blame them. Stepner from the line. Yeah, we talked about you've got to, you know, the requirements. I've always said the four are you've got to be tough enough, you've got to win on the road, you've got to protect the lead, you've got to come from behind. Well, they've done it. I've seen that with his Brandon, with his uh, Calgary team all playoffs long. They can they can come from behind, they defend, they win on the road, they certainly are tough enough. Although, having said that, I'm surprised they've never really exerted, they haven't really killed guys out there, they haven't really cleaned people. It hasn't been a whole lot of major hitting. It's been a difference in size and a difference in strength that the Calgary Hitmen have capitalized on. 15,335, the official attendance here in Calgary tonight. Huge crowd. And they're ready for a celebration, but Holland in over the line. Holland throws it in front, another chance, score! No, it didn't go in the net. How did he miss? I thought Brett Blue for sure had that goal. That hit the post. Man, I was chalking, well, you can hear it. I chalked it up. That was good puck movement. They did come from that right side, got it right across the ice. Whoa. Well, I guess that is a make good for what happened in the second period when Calgary had a similar goal post. Here's Bubnik in front, and it rolls off his stick off the target. Well, my apology to the Tri-City Americans fans watching south of the line. I thought for sure. We'll look at it, I'm sure, in a couple of moments. Jones went one way, the puck went the other. And Holland had set it up, he threw it across. I think the way it bounced off the post, it looked like it was in. But... Yeah, I think it went right through the crease. Are they going to review it on the whistle? I don't think there's anything to review. I don't think it's a goal. It was just premature call by me. Fazer gets that pass from Holland. Holland goes down that right wing and you know makes a good pass right to the middle of the ice. He advances it to the far side. Can't get the shooter's number over there, but it certainly comes up high as if it hits something hard. If you get a good look at it here, it'll go right through the crease and off that ah. far post, and that's what made it jump up in the air. Might have been Ewan with the shot that put that one in, but hard to know. Well, that would have been interesting had they made it 4-2. Well, you had a couple defensemen. It was definitely Holland moving into the offensive zone, and that was either Ewan or Cruz Reddick with that shot. 
And we get a whistle stoppage almost five minutes into the third period. Well, that's uh, a team that's certainly as close as you can possibly get now out shooting the Tri-City Americas 24-23. You know, Jim Hiller's team certainly on the ropes. And we talk an awful lot about uh, those segments. That when you're down by three, I know you said it earlier, I always broke it up in a seven-minute segment. Get one the first seven, get one the second seven, and now you're at the 14-minute mark and try to get one in the third segment if at all possible. But... You know, there's still a couple minutes left, and they came that close, like you just saw there, to getting the score from 4-1 to one to 4-2. to two. And I kind of wondered why the whistle had blown. Well, I wonder no more. There was too many men on the ice for Calgary. So the Tri-City Americans are on a power play here. Bench minor to the hitman. And over there to serve it is Royer. And I sure love the work Royer did on the all-important go-ahead goal. Him and Burgard. And isn't that kind of typical of the Hitman Bill? It's always somebody different through these playoffs. And 15 wins, looking for the all-important 16th and final one. And man, they've had such spread out contributions. I mean, who do you want to start with? Fiddler, Del Cowan, Chris Fuko, Ian Schultz, Zach Stebner, Misha Pasenko. You're right, I mean, you just go right through the list. And then you got your exclamation marks. Guys like Michael Stone shooting the puck. Well, here's an opportunity now with a minute, 39 seconds left and a two-man advantage. A must, obviously, capitalize MUST for the Tri-City Americans. It starts with a face-off win. Cruz Reddick gets the puck back to Plouffe. Back to Reddick. Reddick holding it. And now Plouffe down low. Shineman. Shineman holding, holding. Shot blocked. Huseman. Lazo, Lazo coming off the corner board, centering pass and a save by Jones. By the way, Stone sent the puck from one end to the other over the glass. Not often you see over the glass penalty, but that's why they're two men short. Johnny Lazo did something in the offensive zone that's impressive. This is the unpredictability. Watch number 21. Little spin, he'll fake one way, turn the other way, buys himself a little bit of time, and then throws that under the stick pass to the slot area. Has to be a whole lot more of that. They're good at doing that. Kloof. Shineman can't reach it, but second chance for Calgary, and they send it all the way down the ice. 5.45 gone here in the third, but the two-man advantage for the Americans. This could be their last gasp in terms of getting back into the game and keeping the series alive. Reddick has it poked off the stick. Now it comes out to the neutral zone. And you know the crowd's going to get noisy if the Hitman can really get through this one. 42 seconds to go in the two-man. Shineman, Kloof, shot, deflect, rebound! Jones comes over and makes the save. Wow! Does he ever have to be fast to come back off the top of the crease and then meet that puck as it caromed off the end boards to prevent Messier from poking it in? You know, Giffen Nyren gets himself running around ever so slightly and the Americans capitalize on this. Number 17 tries for him. You see him, he's way out of position there. Now watch the puck off the back wall. Jones is over on the right third of that crease and because of his leg power and the strength of his legs, he was able to push himself right back to the near side on which the puck was coming off the back post. Really, really impressive goaltender. Bill, I think as of that and you look at it again. As Watch the push. That save. He has now passed Alexander Fomachev for most saves in the playoffs in the history of the Hitman. So he has all the records now. That was the last one he needed. And he got it right there. What a move from one side of the net to the other. 6-4. Strong, strong core. Strong legs. Got himself, that skate was digging in, but as hard as he could to get himself pushed from the right side of the crease to the left to deny that Tri-City chance. 34 seconds left in the two-man advantage for the Americans again. Face-off win, huge. They're still in that first seven-minute segment I was talking about of trying to get back in this game. Baby steps is what it requires. Baser, cross ice, here's Reddick. Reddick, 
Back to Phaser. Phaser. Back to Shinneman to Phaser over to Reddick. As they whip it around, the five on three, but they're kept to the outside, and McKenzie trying to make sure they stay on the outside. Shinneman now. Here's Cruz Reddick. Phaser at the top of the slot. Shot wide. Johnny Lazo gets the rebound, but it went off the stick high and out of play. A lot of time spent on that power play, five on three. And for 30 seconds, I'm guessing, not a real good quality chance. I'm not even sure there was a shot on Martin Jones on that sequence. However, five seconds left in the first penalty, 27 in that second. A chance, again, to capitalize on some scoring chance with a face-off win. And from that face-off, Fluke pokes it forward, but right to a hitman who sends it the length of the ice. Kersky will leave it, first penalty over, and there's just 16 seconds left in the stone penalty. Schmidt in over the blue line. Kloof got caught up in the numbers game there, lost it, and Cowan sends it down the ice, and Stone getting set to come back on, and 15,000 people let the Hitman know what they feel about that penalty kill. They're back at full strength weathering that storm, and they still have a 4-1 lead. Seven minutes into the third period. And now they'll get back to trying to get to some zone time. Offside, stopping the play. Well, that was pretty much a must, I think, for the Americans, Bill. They really needed a goal there. Yeah, they did. And you know, this is a guy, Tyler Schmidt, that leads him in scoring from the point. And if I can go back to the first two games in this building, 11 goals against Tyler Schmidt was a plus one in those two games played. So, you know, he's given it his best, 19-year-old. He's led this team, and got to believe that he's certainly going to be one of the 20-year-olds on this hockey club next year. But between Schmidt, Toll, and Brett Plouffe, they've done such a good job of shutting down the other team scoring, have not been able to do that against this Calgary Hitman team. Here comes Toll in over the line, right on to Jones, a rebound there, but it's swept away. And Bubnik will start back as Fuko on his left, Shattuck on his right. Bubnik is hit as he's lined up nicely by Hughesman, but Bubnik withstood the hit equally as well, as it's sent in by Michael Stone. Tri-City has outshot Calgary, 26-24 in this hockey game. Make it 26-25 now as Paczerski makes that save, and we get some pushing and shoving, but it has not been a nasty series by any stretch of the imagination. No, that, and that's a credit really to both teams. I, I would say there was None of what we call that BS that accompanies sometimes the finals. And, you know, I was, you know, not to disparage the OHL, but, you know, watching a little bit of one of the games out there between Barry and Windsor, it was just a, a gong show for a while. I mean, this is a credit to the two teams that are in the Western Hockey League final, both number one seeds in their conference. That hasn't happened since 2003. Kelowna and Red Deer playing, and it's been really solid, good playoff hockey. Well said. Broda. Couldn't keep the puck in deep. Here comes Reddick. Reddick holding it. Oh, he's he stood up. He gets back up fast. But one number 11 hit the other one as Stebner really hit Reddick. That was a good solid hit. McKenzie hits his man, but he didn't have the puck, so there's going to be an interference penalty on McKenzie. No question about that as he knocked down Hughesman, but McKenzie. Deserves a penalty because the puck didn't get to the uh, Tri-City player that he was hitting. Yeah, and I mean, you, you talk about somebody stepping up all the time. It's not necessarily in every single game you got to start. It's somebody stepping up to do the things within the game. Zach Stebner, 6'3", a 19-year-old, one of the guys you talked about from Saskatoon. Haven't heard or seen much from, from him all game, but all of a sudden, bang, he steps up and delivers that kind of hit on Redding. This is a penalty we're talking about. There's the interference. Matt McKenzie and going to that well. I know that, you know, it's a 4-1 lead and there hasn't been a whole lot of Tri-City chances, but if I'm Mike Williamson, I don't want to go to this well too often. Kloof gets the puck. Kloof again shoots. Didn't get past the first two. They uh, both blocked the shot. Schultz and Fiddler. There's your power play stat. Two for 26 in the entire series are the Tri-City Americans. 
puck caught up in somebody's equipment down there. Where's that puck? Somebody got it down there? And they just flipped out of play. Maybe Cam's got it. I don't know. How close are you to that, Cam? <laughs> we'll get his microphone turned on. What? Uh, what's the feeling on that Hitman bench, Cam? If you can sense anything and any urgency in the American bench. Well, I would say the Calgary bench is very workmanlike right now. They seem to be focused on the task. The the Tri City American bench. I wouldn't. Not overly frustrated, but they got to see in the, the writing on the wall here if they don't get one pretty soon. Cruz Reddick trying to get one there, but that's stopped. Held in. Here's Johnny Lazo. Lazo over to Schmidt. Schmidt gets the puck. Schmidt throws it hard in front of the net. Comes over here to Shineman. Shineman holding it. Shineman in front for Schmidt, and a shot goes high and wide. Good opportunity there, and the rebound carries to Broda. Broda stood up by Reddick, but Broda follows up, and then Reddick hits Broda as the puck goes back to the Tri City American goaltender. 4-1 Calgary, game five, exactly halfway through the third period. Icing called, and now one more second, so we'll step aside. WHL Championship, Ed Chanel Trophy in the house. Kinnaman with a nice pass, maybe the best scoring chance of the recent power plays, he threw it to Schmidt, Schmidt breaking in from the blue line. But again, you know, you look up at Martin Jones and you just say, well, you know what, he just doesn't get caught out of position. Sometimes you feel a little sorry for a guy like Michael Snyder, the backup goalie. You know, you're sitting over on the bench there and you feel kind of like he's been stored away like a fur coat for the, you know, for the rest of the season. But you've got to be alert. One shot can change everything. You're in there. I love these fans thought they had one shot for a big prize. $25. Dollars on the 50-50 tonight. They just awarded it. And Bill's still in the booth, so I know what that means. There's a shot knocked down, didn't reach the goal. In fact, that shot was taken by Dryden Dow in his first game in the championship series. And by the way, he is from Calgary, so it's got to be a big thrill, even though his team is trailing. And another penalty kill for Calgary as McKenzie comes back on the ice, but here's Fazer, throws it in front. Oh, 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 what another great save by Jones as going to the net was Holland. And as he got there to deflect it, there was Big Jones to make another big save in this hockey game. You'll look at it as we go to break. Calgary four, Tri-City one. We're coming back to see if the Hitmen can win the championship of the Western Hockey League on Shaw. Well, when you're 6-4, and you've got the strength of a Michael Stone, you are a factor in a hockey game. It's 4-1, Calgary started in the first period. Adam Huseman got the Tri-City Americans on the board with some good work, right around the net. Wouldn't take no for an answer, kept jamming, kept jamming that puck. 1-0 Americans, Misha Pasenko down right wing, probably the only goal I think Pachersky would want back, and then Stone goes to work. One time's a perfect pass from Mackenzie Royer. This is a power play goal. This one makes it 3-1. What a shot. A nice play. Tyler Fiddler steals the puck off Shineman late in that period. His sixth of the season. 4-1 Calgary. 9.08 left. And before they're heading to Brandon for the championship in the Memorial Cup. Calgary Hitman. Here's how it's gone. They allow 22 goals against Moose Jaw. They cut that down to 14 against Medicine Hack. They reduced that to 13 goals against Brandon and the Tri-City Americans have scored just seven times in the championship series and that's because of goaltending like, like that. that. When you're reducing your goals against as you move along, you're doing something pretty darn special. And if it keeps going, there's a chance it goes wide of the net. They'll be rewarded here in the next nine minutes. Shattuck trying to lug that puck out. Well, six different chances to get it out. And they'll skate it out this time. Pass picked off though as Kloof took the Nyron pass. Nyron gobbles it up once more. Kloof lines him up. Nyron moves it around the board. Here's a lead breakaway pass. Fuko going in. Fuko is stopped by Pachurski and the Nets off its support. As the back checking Ewan 
Went right into his own goal, crashing the net off its support. All the series that we have covered and seen with the Calgary Hitmen, they are very good at recognizing opportunities to stretch the ice. This was a terrific headman pass to Chris Fuko. And that's how close he came to making it a 5-1 game. But again, terrific job that Calgary does of recognizing. And the timing is perfect. Fuko broke up his own, own, own zone at exactly the right time to take that pass. Calgary with 107 points in the regular season. 10 more than the Tri-City Americans, who finished fourth overall, two conference winners. But no question, the East has been stronger this year. The thing we love the most about Major Junior Hockey, at least speaking for myself, I love how it goes in cycles. That said, doesn't always go all the way up and all the way down. Just look at the Calgary hit, and they are just consistently here. If they win this game, they will have twice as many series wins than they do losses. They'll have 22 series wins against 11 losses, and this will be their ninth in their last 11 that they've played. Schultz out to the neutral zone. Broda will roll it in. The Hitmen are seven and a half minutes away from capturing the Ed Chanel Cup. Will this be an icing? It is. Martin Jones, you need 16 wins to get out of the Western Hockey League and win the championship. He's one away. In fact, Martin Jones right now is seven minutes and 18 seconds away because he's been that solid. He's been that good. He's so positionally strong, and he's a goaltender that you kind of start taking for granted. And that's scary because that tells you how good he is. Western Hockey League goaltender of the year. Add up all the numbers built, but 52 wins all year, 18 losses all year. I think that was uh, Calvin Pickard, the WHL goalie of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Should know that. Calvin Pickard at Seattle faced almost a thousand more shots than Martin Jones with a 914 save percentage. Certainly Jones was Eastern Conference goaltender of the year. Weaving his way inside the Calgary line, but no further. It's back to one and out for Tri-City. But you know what? From the American standpoint, you remarked about this the other night after the game when we were making our way out of the arena. A big highlight for them was not being swept, was to be able to win that game in front of their fans, to show even going into next year and that's barring a miracle comeback here, that hey, we beat them at least once. They'll get something to feed off of and reward the fans, as we say, as Sylvester hits the side of the net. A lot of teams would like to be in the showcase series. Two out of 22 make it. But the Americans have been the second best team in this series. They were good in the first period of night. Yeah, they came out with a good game plan. They followed it. They worked at it. They got a lot of shots. Not many periods. You get 14 shots on goal like the Tri-City Americans did in that first period. Couldn't sustain it. And I, I was a little surprised how quickly they got away from that in the second period. It just weren't a factor in period two. Boy, when Calgary scores, and we've seen it all year, they score in bunches, and they did again tonight. Three goals in just under seven minutes breaking the 1-1 tie, and they haven't looked back since. Lead pass, broken up, sent down the ice by Burgart. Toll gets the puck, and for Jared Toll, for Johnny Lazo, and for Brett Kloof, 20-year-olds, this could make the la mark the last five minutes of their major junior careers. Kloof from Winnipeg, Lazo from Winnipeg, Toll from Maple Ridge, British Columbia. Great careers for all three of them. Michael Stone's mother, Jackie, has had a rest in these playoffs. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, when they get back to the Memorial Cup, if Calgary is able to do that, which it looks like will, it's again a battle between Mark from Brandon and Michael 
from Calgary. She didn't do very well last year. She did a little better this year in the Brandon Calgary series. Last year, she had to go to the hospital. They thought she had an ulcer. It was proven it was okay. Hmm. But she's been taking that series awful hard when Michael and Mark play against each other. And it looks like that's going to happen at least one more time in Brandon. Jackie, we hope you do well. And the last time a WHL team hosted the Memorial Cup, we had two WHL teams in the championship game with Medicine Hat losing to Vancouver after beating Vancouver in the final series. So maybe. I know Ron Robinson would sure take that, the commissioner of the WHL. That's pretty cool. That's good bragging rights. Here's a chance for Vasenko, but he's guided off the path to the net. Well, he'll try from behind the net, or will he? Yes, he will. Hitmen aren't interested in adding to their lead. They're just interested in protecting. And why not? They're down to 4 minutes and 16 seconds. Lead pass, Broda tips it in. Ploof collects it. Now Huseman in over the line. Huseman, drop pass, doesn't work. Sylvester trying to chase it down. And you think, Bill, all the way back to round number one, uh, there's got to be players in brass from Moose Jaw watching right now, and they're saying, we had them. Yeah. We had them. It was 3-1. And how would have the playoffs played out had the Warriors finished them off? Who yeah. would be here in the final? But you remember game seven that we did here on Shaw. It was a very... I mean, decisive, it was a convincing, a very solid, if you will, win by the Calgary Hitmen, but they certainly had uh, a scare put into them. They didn't want to die with all their music still in them, or did they? But they found a way to do it. And it's done them well. I think I, I, I think it's helped them. I think Absolutely. It's, it might be the best thing ever happened to them. Whoa! Almost another one there for Shattuck. As the puck came into Pachurski's crease. Last year, we've gone through this before, but to go 12-0, they didn't, you know, the first three rounds, it, nothing in the way of adversity. And all of a sudden, they got into the final against Kelowna, and they were down two, and then down three. Here's Stone, Patrick attempt, blocked. So it's all about adjustments, all about experience, all about learning. Stanko limps off over at the far side, he was hurt. But he's made his way to the Calgary bench. There's two and a half minutes remaining in game number five. The Calgary Hitman, who won the championship in 1999, beating the Kamloops Blazers in a five-game series. Lost last year. As Cam said, 11 years ago to the day, they were beating the blue-shirted Kamloops Blazers in front of 17,000 here at the Saddle Dome. There's over 15,000 tonight. And in about another minute or so, they're all going to get on their feet. Schmidt from the line. That's blocked. Sylvester gets in front of that one. Another shot. Jones gets in front of that one. Once more in the crowd with a big applause for Martin Jones as he stops. Yet another one. 31 saves on 32 shots. Yeah, and he is proving why he is the Western Hockey League goaltender of the year. And it is congratulations to Calvin Pickard in Seattle. I had that turned around a little bit, but Martin Jones, terrific, absolutely. And even that last sequence, Dan, there was three attempted blocks, two blocked shots by the hitmen. They are playing their butts off for this guy. That's how much his teammates feel about Martin Jones. Hey, he does it for him. Yeah, they'll get in, they'll sacrifice their bodies for him. Two minutes. 19-year-old Martin Jones, a big story from North Vancouver. Makes another save. And the puck is shot out. Even that last save, Dan, he knew he didn't have to make a move. All he had to do was stay where he was. That puck was going to be shot right into him. How does he know that? Lazo in over the line. Poked off his stick by Shattuck. He'll roll it down the ice. This will be on the goalie. 90 seconds remaining here in Calgary. That's the time remaining for the Hitman to start celebrating. And I believe the bench will have to stay in full control, but we can see, although we're blocked by the high scoreboard here, some of that 
sort of high, not quite high-fiving, but they're giving the little fists down there. And the fans are starting to rise to their feet. What a great scene here tonight in Calgary, Alberta. And before we do anything, we should congratulate all the people involved, not just Mike Williamson, but Joel Otto and Brent Kissio and Darcy Wakaluk from their coaching staff, their GM Kelly Kissio we spoke about so often, all the people who work behind the scenes, Will McMillan, their athletic therapist. Organizational win as much as anything here. And there's Mike Williamson, who a couple years ago didn't know he'd be back in hockey. He got this chance with the Calgary Hitman. Do you know Bob Torrey interviewed both Hiller and Williamson to be their head coach? He settled in on Torrey. Williamson then landed in Calgary, taking over from Dave Lowry. And Lowry's got to be smiling somewhere tonight as this team is a minute away. Last minute to play. 4-1 for the Hitman. And that's going to be the series score as well as Toll plays a cross ice to Huseman. Lead pass down the ice. The icing with 43 seconds to go. And if the fans aren't all on their feet now, they certainly will be soon. The impressive thing for me as you watch the Calgary Hitmen year after year, Dan, they may not win the championship every year, but they always are a championship caliber team. And that really sets a team apart. And boy, they have worked hard to get to this point. Well, maybe we can just let the crowd take it to the finish line. Listen to them. Let's go Hitmen, 30 seconds remaining as Toll will play across ice. And we'll see if the Tri-City Americans can gain the zone one more time. But the fans just chanting, let's go, Hitman!" And with 18 seconds to go, we'll let them cheer them to victory. A tasty win for the city of Calgary, but for Hitman players and coaches who lost last year, this is sweet redemption. Congratulations to the 2010 Ed Chanel Cup winning Calgary Hitman, number one in the regular season and number one with a bullet in the playoffs. 68 wins on the season, 24 losses in total. Remarkable. And what a scene down there. There's some of the players that didn't get in too. You saw Asham out there with his jersey on and there's a look at the Tri-City scene. And again, uh, congratulations to the Americans and what they accomplished this year. This is a 22nd year and this is the first time in the big dance. It's the first time they've witnessed and been part of a championship series. And they'll have stuff to build on here, a young team to be sure. So you look at Jim Hiller. This Tri-City team has three 20-year-olds, six 19-year-olds, and five 18-year-olds. Bob Torrey was determined there would be no big sell-off at the trade deadline. He knew and felt that his team is a next-year team. And he certainly knows what he's talking about. He's done it before. And we do offer our sincere congratulations to the Tri-City Americans on the kind of year they had. 47 wins, 13 in the playoffs. That totals up to 60 and 30 losses. Make that 31 with a team that was never gonna quit, never be denied, and provided a ton of fun hockey in the city of Kennewick this winter. We just saw a glimpse of Kelly Kissio hugging one of his hitmen. Now the handshake begins, although the hitmen are still celebrating at one end. They better quickly join their handshake, and they're doing just that. As you look at Stone, who's the star of this game, if it, while St Stone and, and Jones, you can flip a coin, really, not only tonight, but in these entire playoffs. I know you and I both had a vote in the MVP trophy, and both of us had to, boy, look at each other a lot before deciding on our picks. 
Well, there's no doubt in my mind, Michael Stone was the MVP of this series, and you're right. Not to disparage or take anything away from Martin Jones, I found it pretty tough to pick between those two. We'll find out who the MVP is. Glad to see Colson. Hopefully yeah, there he he's not uh, too seriously hurt. He left the game, never came back. For probably what was that, the last period? Look at that group. My goodness. The celebration just starting tonight here in the Saddle Dome. Let's go downstairs to Cam Moon. Michael Stone, uh, your thoughts on uh, the playoffs? Unbelievable uh, coming back from a 3-1 deficit to Moose Jaw in the first round. Just your thoughts right now. Uh, I don't know, really. It's just a really good feeling. Uh, you know, we weren't sure what was going to happen uh, in that series against Moose Jaw, but we kept the faith, and uh, we knew we could pull it out. And uh, look at all these people out here. Now, I, to be able to, to come back from that 3-1 deficit, you got pushed hard by the Medicine Hat Tigers. You got pushed hard by the brand new Wheat Kings. How much did those series help en route to this WHL championship? I think so. Uh, you know, they're, they're all good teams. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really have much to say right now. They got, it's just a great honor to be a WHL champion. All right, uh, Michael, thanks for this. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Michael Stone, couple of goals here tonight. We'll send it back upstairs to Dan and Bill. Four years in the league for Stone and all those playoff games. And there's Pachurski who gave tries to get a chance. And he goes back to get his goal stick. And now uh, we have Dan Elliott standing by with the player who scored more goals in the 2010 playoffs than anybody else. So I think Joel Broda has just left him. So we'll get back to him in a second as they're going to get ready for the presentation of the championship trophy. All the, all the sticks and gloves and helmets have all been nicely gathered, gathered there in that the one corner. Yeah. You know, it's so impressive to see how the, this Calgary Hitman team almost surgically takes a team apart. We had the real privilege of watching and calling the series, the seventh game against Moose Jaw. We saw the six against Medicine Hat. We did the four, the five against Brandon, and now this series here with the Tri-City Americans, Dan, and you know, they are so methodical. I'd be really surprised and very, very interested to see how this team fares in Brandon. I mean, there's still a, a ways to go, obviously, but it's not a marathon there, it's a sprint. It's a short series. You gotta just play very, very good from night to night. And I really gotta be honest with you, I like their chances. And what a job Kelly Okissi has done for this hockey club. Let's be honest, the trades he made to strengthen this team at a time that was maybe the lowest point of the season, right around trade deadline, have paid wonders for it. Last time they were at the Memorial Cup, they lost the 99 games, 7-6 in overtime to Ottawa. That was with Brian Kilray coaching. And an early overtime goal in the championship game, so that's a long time ago. The championship hats of the WHL are, are on, and we're gonna see the Ed Chanel Cup. We lost Ed a couple years ago. This was his hometown. I think he'd be pretty happy with the scene that we're looking at right here now. Ed Chanel was such a proponent of smart hockey. He was a guy that brought in the scholarship program. He loved to see teams play a blue collar game by skilled people and not the other way around. You're right, I think he'd be very, very impressed with the way this Calgary Hitman team has played this season and how they played in the playoffs. And there's the big trophy. And he loved Tri-Cities too. They were the Scholastic Team of the Year. Let's pick up the announcement here in the building. We would now ask members of the Calgary Police Service who will serve as the honor guards for tonight's closing ceremony to bring the Ed Chanel Cup to center ice for the presentation of the WHL Championship Trophy. Participating in the closing ceremonies tonight are the following dignitaries. Representing the Western Hockey League, WHL Commissioner, Mr. Ron Robertson. And Mr. Richard Dirksen, WHL Vice President of Hockey Operations. From Cal Tiger, Assistant Manager, Adrian Reed. And from Husky Mohawk, Marketing Communications Manager, Tim Hansen, WHL presenting sponsors of the WHL Championship Series.
for the presentation of the 2010 Western Hockey League Playoffs Series Most Valuable Player Award to be presented by Vice President of Hockey Operations for the WHL, Mr. Richard Dirksen. The Most Valuable Player Award is presented to the individual judge to be the most outstanding player in the 2010 WHL Playoffs. The Most Valuable Player Award for the 2010 WHL Playoffs is number 31, Martin Jones of the Calgary Hitmen. WHL champion Calgary had to come forward for the official presentation of the WHL Championship Series commemorative plaques. Adrian Reed, assistant manager from Cal Tire, and Tim Hansen from Husky Mohawk will now present the alternate captains the WHL Championship Series plaques, which will also be presented to all members of the WHL champions, Calgary Hippen. Boys and girls, the Western Hockey League Championship Trophy, the Ed Chenoweth Cup, is named in honor of past WHL chairman and president Ed Chenoweth, who over the past four decades contributed more to the growth and development of the WHL and major junior hockey in Canada than any other individual. Ed Chenoweth passed away in April 2008 and was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in the Builder category in November 2009. And now for the presentation of the Ed Chenoweth Cup, presented annually to the WHL champions. I would now ask Western Hockey League Commissioner Mr. Ron Robinson to come forward to present the Ed Chenoweth Cup to co-captains of your Calgary Hitman, Michael Stone and Ian Schultz. Western Hockey League champions and winners of the Ed Chenoweth Cup, your Calgary Hitman! There's a photograph that will be treasured. There's another one that's coming. Stone hoists it. They will go with co-captains all year. Stone wearing the C at home. So he's got the mob around him and pretty soon that tradition that was started years and years ago north of where we're at now up in Edmonton with the Stanley Cup champion Oilers they'll all get on that ice for that favored shot but first some victory laps you think he'll cut his hair Broda soon he may hasn't had a haircut since last year you know, it's not often that a guy like Joel Broda gets two chances. That's Kissio, by the way. Yeah, the like raising it last year as a 19-year-old, comes back as a 20-year-old, gets an opportunity to go to the Memorial Cup. Good for Joel Broda. You know, and I get a credit to the Tri-City Americans. Joel Broda said the team now, the Americans now, are where they wanted to be when Joel Broda was a Tri-City American. But, then you saw the captains out there wearing the letters I don't think that you can win a championship unless you've got another four or five or six leaders in the room other than the guys that are wearing the captains the, the letters and that guy Nyron certainly one of them a bunch of guys there I think are leaders on that hockey club that's another reason why I think that makes them so strong so tough to play against we're seeing players uh, who last year 
heard in their dressing room the celebration that the Kelowna Rockets were going through, and I'll bet that sound was not a pleasant one, hearing all the celebrations in the Okanagan. And here they get, one year later, a chance to do it. There's the backup goaltender, Michael Snyder. And how about those Campbell Blazer players that got traded, the Shaddix, and well, you mentioned Nyron and Bubnik and, and such. And we did Campbell's in the first round, and Boy, you got to hope for Craig Bonner and that team to start getting some playoff series wins. They've just gone so long without one, and those players have been a part of that. Now they go from one extreme bill to the other. Yeah, not winning a playoff game to going to the Memorial Cup. How about that? Let's go downstairs to Cam Moon with Kelly Kissio. Kelly Kissio, GM here of the Calgary Hitman. Congrats, first of all. Uh, just your thoughts right now. You must be uh, pretty excited. Well, uh, obviously, uh, these kids are uh, outstanding. They did a heck of a job all year. We came together as a team at the right time in the playoffs, and uh, uh, they kept surprising me with how much energy they had and, and how hard they competed, and uh, this is well-deserved by these young guys. And you had to add some players this year. You brought some guys in from Kamloops. Uh, Jimmy Bubnick comes in, and you get Zach Stebner in here, Tyler Shattuck, Giffen, Nyren. Uh, what did they bring to the mix? Well, I think uh, they added a great deal of depth. They're all real solid hockey players. Uh, you know, they came and, and they got a little bit of a fresh start and and uh, probably helped themselves, us, helped us, and probably helped their careers. You watch a guy like Martin Jones, who uh, you had right here from the beginning, and you watch his development as a, as a youngster and now as a guy on the brink of a, a pro career. And, just unbelievable development for him. Well, he's been uh, he's been outstanding for us for uh, three years now, and uh, he is uh, a super kid, a level-headed kid, and and obviously is an outstanding goaltender that uh, helped us uh, win this uh, playoffs. A great job by the coaching staff too. Mike Williamson comes in his first year with the Hitmen, but ten previous years with the Portland Winter Hawks, and I, the whole staff looked like they did. A Job. Well, I think, uh, I think they're an outstanding group of, group of kids, or, I mean, group of coaches, and, uh, you know, you put three or four good guys together, good things will happen, and that's what happened here today. Kelly, thanks for this. Kelly Kessio, GM of the Hitman, we'll go upstairs to Dan and Bill. Yeah, he's the architect, and remember, really, he coached this team for a while, and he stepped, well, for a long time, he coached this team. That's a tough job doing both, and he recognized that. I guess you have to say that was a good move by him because allowing himself to focus full-time as a GM, I mean, he's talked about that before. That's been huge, and before we get you to react to that, we've got the head coach of the winning team, Mike Williamson, with Dan Elliott. Dan. Oh, all right, back here with the uh, head coach of the WHL Championship winning team, Mike Williamson. Congratulations, Mike. How's it feel? Unbelievable. Yeah, it wasn't the prettiest game, but uh, Jonesy was incredible. We got some timely goals in the second, and I just, I'm so proud of the way this group has come together. Talk about this season for you. You come in your first year as a head coach, and you're a WHL champion. Well, it's, the foundation has been set here, and it was easy to come in and, and just continue to build on things. The coaching staff, what KISS has done, and the scouting staff has done, and you know, the Flames give us every resource imaginable to be successful. So uh, to come in and get the opportunity, I feel very fortunate. Huge depth on your team. One first line through the fourth didn't matter, so you put out all the potential to score. How important was that down the stretch? Well, I think it made the difference. Uh, you know, all year different guys have stepped up. We haven't had to rely on any one guy. Uh, Jonesy, of course, was terrific, but our depth came through and uh, it did it for us tonight. Off to the Memorial Cup, and Brandon, you got to like your chances going there. Well, anyone's got a chance. You have to get in, get in the door, and uh, we're at the dance, and now we have to make the most of it. Congratulations and enjoy this. Thanks. All right, we'll send it back to Dan and Bill. And we've got more celebration coming up here. I think they're going to have a nice night here in Calgary. The fans certainly will enjoy it, but all the youngsters on the team. And uh, they're still moving that cup around. There's a nice moment. Brandon Posen, the leading scorer in the WHL regular season. Leading scorer in the playoffs. Wow. Let's go back downstairs. And we are, is it Cam or is it? All right. Here's Cam Boone. All right, we got Martin Jones, playoff MVP. Your thoughts uh, on the way your team played in front of you here tonight? Uh, it was awesome. I mean, um, 
you, you know, we, we started off a little rocky and uh, we faced a little adversity and I think that just uh, uh, fueled our fire a little bit and and, uh, and got us going and then we got better every series and uh, it feels awesome right now. Yeah, how'd you, how'd you feel in there tonight? I, I watched the warm up, you look pretty dialed in. Yeah, I mean, obviously we weren't happy with uh, uh, the outcome last game and uh, and uh, I mean, uh, we wanted to come out with a strong start and uh, we knew the fourth one's the hardest to win and they were going to come uh, with a lot of desperation. We had to match that tonight. Uh, last season, you guys cruise right to the final. You, you land up losing to Kelowna in the final. What sort of things did you learn from last season's playoffs? Uh, not to take anything for granted, I think. Uh, uh, I think the difference with this year is we did face that adversity and uh, we had to work to get to where we were. And, and last year, I think uh, uh, maybe we took it for granted and, and we didn't have uh, any adversity really. We kind of cruised right to the final. So uh, this year we had to battle and work for it and uh, it feels that much better. How'd you enjoy the crowd here tonight? Uh, it was awesome. It was, uh, reminded me of uh, Saskatoon at the World Junior Finals. It was, it was equally as loud as today. How much are you looking forward to the Memorial Cup? Uh, very excited. We're going to soak this in for a couple days and uh, then it's right back to work. All right, Martin, thanks very much. Thank you. Martin Jones, playoff MVP, as we go upstairs to Bill and Dan. Yeah, thanks a lot, Cam. You know, uh, again, a credit to Isaac Kelly Kissio and in, in the type of character that he put together on this hockey club. And what I mean by that, there was a lot of guys on this Calgary Hitman team who still had an unfinished junior situation to tend to. We talk about Stebner, Bubnik, Nyron, and Shattuck, Kamloops Blazers. How about Martin Jones? You know, the silver medal, the gold got away from Team Canada at the World Junior. I thought Michael Stone being left off that World Junior team had huge motivation to get to this picture, to get to the Memorial Cup. I talked earlier about Joel Broda, extreme amount of motivation. And boy, I tell you, that's a credit to the coaching staff, to the general manager and everybody connected with the Hitman team to know what moves these guys, what actually motivates them to come up with the kind of a year that they had and what a wonderful playoff they just accomplished. There it is. A difficult trophy to get your hands on and the one that they're gonna be going for the Memorial Cup, some say, is the hardest trophy to win in all of hockey. But I'll guarantee you, folks, this Brandon Weeking team is going to give it one heck of a shot. They are so strong. They're fortified. I think in so many spots, they're going to be tough to beat. Dan Elliott, you've got Brandon Cozen. Take it away. All right, here with Brandon Cozen, leading scorer during the playoffs. You got banged up there in the game. What happened? You all right? Yeah, I'm perfectly fine. It was mostly precautionary, and you know what? It feels a lot better after this win. Talk about this. What was the momentum for you guys? Was last year losing the final a huge uh, part of it all? Well, I think in this game in particular, I think when I went to the dressing room was the momentum switch. We scored three goals, and we wound up winning the game. But uh, it's a great feeling right now. I'm pretty happy with where we're at, and we got a great team here. So we got one more, one more opportunity, and that's what we're going to do. Talk about this franchise that you've been with. You've always had great teams here in Calgary, but never could get to the, the top level. Now you're here. What is it about this group that you're able to do it? Oh, I can't say enough about this group, this organization, the coaches, everything's been great. And, you know, it, it speaks volumes about this organization, where we've come, and how we've been able to, to be where we are every year. And, you know, it, it's just an honor to play for them. Well, it looks like they want to get you involved in the pitchers. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Back to you, Dim. Well, again, congratulations to the Calgary Hitmen from all of us at Shaw, everybody involved in our broadcasts, and uh, what a cap, what a wonderful season topper to another year of exciting Western Hockey League on Shaw. Some final thoughts. We got an extra here in our group. He's a big improvement. Giffen Nyron, WHL champion. He came to Calgary this year. How does it feel? Ah, oh, it's awesome. Uh, got traded here in November and dreamed of this moment. And uh, in front of my fa family and friends, it's uh, I can't even imagine. This is a great feeling. And when you got dealt, did you do you think this was a real possibility at that time? Uh, when we uh, when I saw our team, I knew it. I knew we had something special. And uh, our boys, we. We, uh, we ganged together here in the playoffs and did something real special. And uh, 
I'll never forget this moment for the rest of my life. You guys had a chance to wrap it up in Kennewick. You didn't do it, but it's got to feel pretty good coming here, doing it at home in front of the hometown fans. Absolutely. It, uh, we didn't. We didn't. We played our hearts out in Kennewick too, and it uh, it wasn't in the cards. And uh, I think we uh, the fans were so good all year, and uh, we owed owed them this experience too to share with us. Hey, well, congratulations and uh, good luck in Memorial Cup. Thanks for this. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Right. Enjoy this one, Giff right. and Iron, with you here with Cam. Final thoughts. For me and you, Cam, another fantastic year at WHL Hockey. First team since 2003 to win the regular season championship and then finally get it done in the WHL final. This Calgary Hitman team, they're a good one. Yeah, they really are. They deserved it. They went pillar to post. They had to battle back from the 3-1 deficit in the first round, and they got pushed in every series, and they were able to find a way to get over the top. So I think full credit to the Calgary Hitman, their whole organization, and to the Tri-City Americans to get to this WHL final. They got pushed, but they got better with every series, which bodes well for them going to Brandon in the Memorial Cup. Yeah, no question. They've got a goaltender who's playing at the top of his game right now. They don't rely on one line or one set of defensemen. they got a deep team, so you got to like their chances going into the Memorial Cup because of that. Absolutely. 44th edition of the WHL regular season in the playoffs is wrapped up. The Calgary Hitmen are your 2010 Ed Chanel Cup winners. We'll be back to wrap things up from here in Calgary. Calgary Hitmen are your WHL champions for 2010. The, the celebrations continue here at the Sal Dome. The Calgary Hitmen defeating the Tri-City Americans in five games to win the WHL championship. And once again, Cam, just a fantastic year for the Western Hockey League. It was. Uh, great to be at the different rinks right across the WHL. Each market very unique. And uh, it's a lot of fun to be at the rink. And great to have the fan support that the Western Hockey League has. That's a big reason why we're able to do this here on Shaw is the fans. We appreciate everybody watching. We thank everybody involved with our broadcast across Western Canada, also down the United States during the playoffs. It's been an unbelievable year, and the Calgary Hitmen cap it off in style. For myself, Cam Moon, Dan Russell, Bill Wilms, and our entire crew with the WHL on Shaw, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next season.